Yo, what's poppin' peeps? Welcome to the Metafy Pokemon TCG event. I'm here with my co-host, Gabe Smart. How's it going, Gabe? I'm doing fantastic. We have an incredible um, top eight that's coming up, so I'm super excited to be getting into those games. You know, we got so many fantastic players, and oh, yeah. there have been over 300 players that have battled it out today, and we are now down to that final eight. So it's going to be exciting. Yeah, it's crazy. This is actually the largest Brilliant Stars event, period. And... That's something to say because we've already had our first official regional championships this past weekend or this weekend, I should say, in Brisbane, Australia. So it's um, absolutely uh, amazing that we've had this much of a kind of outpour support, all that stuff. So we really appreciate everyone who played in this event, who's kind of saw Metify in a lot of ways. I know that um, both Gabe and myself are both coaches on Metify. Not every single person knows what Metify is. So Gabe, why don't you explain a little bit about what Metify is to our peeps here? Yeah, yeah, so basically, um, Metify is a, um, it's probably the biggest um, coaching platform in the game. Sure. You know, it's what you want to do, is there are so many players right now who need to get, um, you know, ready for, let's say, Salt Lake City Regionals, um, Liverpool Regionals. You know, there's so many, um, you know, major events that are coming up that people want to get ready for, you know. So we are here to help you um, improve in all of those, you know, um facets of the game if you will say you know i'm sequencing um deck building metagaming you know like there's so many things you know like the um average player really doesn't know how to do at the highest level our goals are going to be to help you guys out improve your game and yeah so shout out to metify for you know sponsoring this event it is super sure. cool i'm um, to see them jumping into the pokemon scene and donating two thousand dollars for this prize pool so major shout out to them and yeah hopefully they can do this for the future for us yeah, yeah, 100%. It should be noted that this event literally is free to enter, and it's a $2,000 prize pool entry. So that's from Metafy's community fund. Um, they've pledged, I think, Gabe, what was it? $1 million? $1 million. Dollars? $1 yeah. million dollars. That's something that I don't have in my bank account uh, yet. We're trying to get there, but it's one of those things. Hopefully, uh, we can do something more with Metafy in the future, but you should totally check them out at metafy.gg. Um, it's not just Pokemon coaching. There's all different kind of coaching. So maybe you suck at Fortnite. Maybe you suck at Pokemon. Maybe you don't suck and you just need uh, a friend. Maybe you need to figure out something we had a lot of great players who played in this event um just to name a few metify coaches we had pedro torres we had uh tord reklev um nico we had alibus. nico alibus as well um gabe accidentally signed up round one and then uh, <laughs> dropped afterwards because uh, we were still filling out the application so absolutely a, a great showing from everyone unfortunately toward reklev did bubble out uh, it's kind of crazy to see the, heavily the world's considered best player uh, playing in this event, it's it's kind of exciting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I mean, I think he finished with a record of 10, 3, and 1. So super, super strong. I think he got to top 16 playing that. I think it was Rapid Strike Yeah, Rapid Malamar. Strike Malamar. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, like, it's, I'm super cool to see. Um, the competition is so, so um, high right now. You know, people are starting to prepare for those, um, you know, major events that are coming around. So, you know, it makes this top 8 even more of a bigger accomplishment for the players that were able to make it. Taking down players like Tord Reklov, uh, Nico Alabas, as you said, so many fantastic players that played in this event, and now we're down to those final eight. So major, major congratulations to all those players that were oh, able yeah. to do so, so well today. 100%. So I think the game that we're going to eventually drop into when top eight starts, top eight starts in about a minute, um, we're going to be jumping into Patricia Gonzalez Walsh's game against Monk, Monkey. Yes. It's, uh, I'm the worst at pronouncing things in the advance. So if uh, you're in here watching the stream after your game, not during the game, please don't watch during your game. Um, we will definitely, um, we can definitely work on that, but it's going to be a matchup between Mew Max and Arceus and Teleon. What do you feel about that game? I think it's an, I would say it's a pretty close matchup. You know, I think that Typically, path decks versus mu decks kind of comes down to does that path stick for more than one to two turns? And if it does, then you know the path decks are going to have the advantage. But you know, if the mu, um, you know, player is able to bump those stadiums every single turn, typically they're going to be favored. But I think it's a super, super close matchup. Um, our season Teleon really started to blow up, um, probably over like this past week or so, and it really has you know kind of solidified itself as one of the best decks. You know, it's kind of like the titan of the format versus the new hot deck right now so it's going to be a super fun game and i'm excited to get into it yeah it should be great so um what we're going to do before we get into the top cut is we're going to take a brief break while we get things set up for our match so stay tuned we will be right back
All right, looks like we're going to be jumping into this game of Patricia, uh, Patricia versus Gonzalez, um, or Gonzalez Walsh against uh, Monkey. Um, I'm just going to get our timer started. So let's yeah. refresh this. And there we so go. So we do see that Pato has a super, super good hand here. We do see the Genesect V, um, the double turbo, and also a couple of ball search cards, oh, along with that Cramomatic as well. So. It is going to be really interesting to see exactly how this first turn plays out. I think that the Chromatic is going to be super, super big here. I'm going to see if they're able to get that VIP pass. So we'll see exactly what happens here. Yeah, there's a lot of cool things that are going on with their hand that I like a lot. Um, just naturally having things. Now, I think in the way that I'd be playing this game, I do like searching through the deck first before committing to an energy. Because you never know, like, what if all your Mew VMAXs are prized? And that would have been better on a Genesec. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's, so it's one of those things where it's those little things. Um, I'd also like to see a full deck search, but looks like we're just having a really easygoing turn there. Um, Mew's known for being an absolute terror, just getting everything set up turn one. Their hand's not bad. What do you think about it, Gabe? Yeah, so they definitely took a very conservative um, turn one approach, which, you know, I guess it kind of makes sense, especially against a Path to the Peak deck. You know, you want to save that Rose Tower for when the Path to the Peak is going to come down. But, you know, they, they weren't even able to use Fusion Strike system at all. They only got the um, Double Turbo down, and their board state necessarily isn't very, very um, developed. But, you know, Mew can go from 0 to 100 super, super quickly, and it definitely looks like they were still able to get a relatively decent set up there so yeah i mean it's one of those things where you could go ultra ball pitch your hand away or at least keep the rose tower grab the mu v max and we might see that very mu predatory approach where it's like mu v max boss's orders because that's really what mu's looking for as it's going first going into the second turn that's when you want to go boss's orders on a two prize card pokemon and literally i think that's what we're going to be seeing um monk didn't really get the nicest hand there yeah Definitely was not the nicest, and I think this is honestly one of like the um, flaws of the um, Arceus and Talion deck. They don't play a ton of, let's say, researchers or Marnies, so oftentimes they can struggle to be able to get multiple um, Vs down turn one, which can lead to their um, only V being knocked out, which is oftentimes where that path of the peak can come into play to slow them down but the issue with that is they didn't get the turn one path of the peak and pato just has a fantastic start and we can probably tell that they're going to be hunting that boss's orders here to be able to take out that rcs and put themselves in a fantastic position yeah it's uh it's gonna be the game uh where's the boss and i i think like pato really had a really good turn just kind of searching through their discard pile or searching through their deck for the first time Again, like I think there's like a, a few things that I would probably do in order of sequencing. Like I would have made sure that I had the Genesect first. I like to, uh, I don't like to count my eggs before they hatch when I'm playing Pokemon because I've been burned so many times uh, playing this game. And I think those are the little things that Metify Coach can really offer. This is the slowest uh, <laughs> I've ever seen a hand come on PTC. I've never but, seen that before. Yeah, neither have I, but uh, we're keeping it exciting. We're keeping it real at the, at the Try Metify events. Yeah, so we do see the Rotom Phone probably going to be looking to put something like a Cremomatic on top. Um, we also do see the Rose Tower in hand, which is going to be a great response to a potential Path to the Peak that does come out here. And we also saw that um, the Arceus and Teleon player did not get something like a Water Energy or a Double Turbo Energy, which does mean that it is going to be significantly uh, harder for them to hit a Marnie Path Swing Turn. Typically, what um, Arceus and Teleon likes to do is they like to go Trinity Nova paired up with a Marnie and a Path of the Peak. Unfortunately, with this hand, they're not going to be able to do that, so we might just see them do something like a Keep Calling, or maybe they'll do something like a Trinity Charge. So, really not a great start um, for them, but, you know, they are... Um, able to get that rcs v star out with that star birth one of the most insane abilities zach um just absolutely crazy to see that they actually gave an ability to this type of pokemon with also such a powerful powerful attack as well really one of the best cards to come out of the brilliant stars expansion yeah i know it's, it's kind of crazy like i think arceus has shaken up a lot we saw a lot of things at uh brisbane regionals we saw it at the card trooper events i mean there was also a handful of 1k 2ks around um, the entire country and like here we are we're seeing it again I think like if you're not playing Mew or you're not playing Arceus you really gotta ask yourself why are you 
playing in a competitive level. I mean, you could always play Pokemon, have fun, or anything else like that, and totally enjoy the game. But at the absolute top, um, upper echelon decks, I think it's like Mew, Arceus, or Dark. Would you not say the same thing? Yeah, no, I mean, I think we kind of saw I'm at the Brisbane Regionals. Every single deck was either a Dark variant, Mew, or the, um, you know, Arceus V-Star. So, you know, it just it kind of seems like those three decks are just kind of taken over the Pokemon trading card game. I think you really have to play one of those three decks. You know, like we really haven't seen a brand new secret deck yet that just beats them all. Maybe we'll see that coming up at Salt Lake City and Liverpool Regionals. But, you know, it definitely seems like it is those three decks world and we're just completely living in it right now. Exactly. I mean, we do see one Jolteon that did make top eight. So that's kind of cool. Um, yes. I think Giovanni made top eight with Jolteon. So maybe we'll get a chance to watch some of their gameplay at some point today. Um, I'm really kind of curious. How did Jolteon navigate through the field? A lot of people have considered Jolteon a dead deck. So we'll, uh, we'll have to see how it plays out. Yeah. Um, we do see the Jolteon. I believe only lost the one round today. So, you know, I think that a lot of people right now are not actually respecting that Jolteon is a relatively decent deck right now. So no one's really playing uh, Manaphy to counter. When Manaphy was announced, everyone was kind of like, oh, Jolteon's dead. So then people started to cut the Manaphy, which now leads to um, Jolteon VMAX starting to become relevant again. So Exactly, exactly. Um, looks like uh, the Path of the Peak might be slowing down uh, Patricia a little bit, but... They do have access to that Peony that can search through anything in their deck. They also have access to Kramomatic. To me, it seems like their deck's just ready to kind of explode on this Arceus. And the fact that they knocked out both Sobbles, um, I think, allows this opportunity to just knock out Arceus, knock out Arceus. Although they both have big charms. Um, I know that a lot of people are going back and forth between choice belts and big charms. Um, I know that you've worked a lot on this deck, Gabe. What are, what are your thoughts on it? I would probably say that the big charms are definitely better right now. Um, simply because Mew V Max is kind of like the most important matchup that you have to beat, and Mew can very easily hit that 280. So you just want to make it a little bit harder, force them to have that one extra power tablet, force them to have that belt. You know, it just adds a, another layer of something that they have to go through, which is why I definitely prefer the big charm. Also, this deck is built around two-shotting everything, and you have those things like Sharon's Care to be able to loop them over and over and over again. So I think that the big charms are significantly better. Sometimes one belt is okay, but, you know, I've been enjoying just the two-charm. Yeah, I, the way that I always like to put it, it's like a V-Star Pokemon is worth two prize cards, but with Big Charm, it has V-Max HP. Like, literally, yeah. Arceus and Mew have the same amount of HP. One's worth two prize cards, one worth, is worth three prize cards. So, really, like, Monkey is just looking to knock out Mew V-Max, knock out Mew V-Max, whereas Patricia has to go knock out Arceus, knock out Arceus, knock out Arceus. One of those games can be a little bit tighter than others um especially in different matchups i mean Mew can kind of go through anything and i think that's what a lot of us are learning about this meta game but so far um i don't know it's 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 interesting yeah no so we do just see the trinity nova doing 180 and it seems like kato is definitely playing a relatively conservative approach here as we saw last turn just using the cross fusion strike but now we do see the chromatic heads the issue is is that their list only plays two stadiums i believe um two or three so their list is definitely much more susceptible to pat the peak and we do see them actually choosing not to get a stadium here because they have that peony in hand so we can only imagine that they're going to be going for a stadium paired up with something like a power tablet from the looks of it because this is kind of that swing turn where they really want to hit 310 here if they are then they're going to be putting themselves in a fantastic situation if they just barely miss then we're probably going to see that sharon's care come out and wipe away all that work that they put into this turn yeah if you don't get the knockout on this pokemon it's really one of those things where you're able to just like chair and scare chair and scare so arceus v-star you want to knock it out in one single hit also i'm reading through the youtube comments someone's like zach knocking out a bowl of uh, captain crunch because apparently y'all have like supersonic uh hearing <laughs> or maybe my bowl's louder than i thought it's not captain crunch today peeps i have a bowl of like uh pasta i went for uh to my local budget grocery store Got one of those pre-made bags of pasta, and I'm just munching on that because it's the first time I've had all day. I've been up since 8 a.m. to eat. Um, eating's very important. Stay hydrated, all that good stuff. Hopefully everyone. We gave them a generous little break between top eight, uh, between uh, round 14 and top eight. So hopefully everyone got a chance to eat some lunch there. 
Are we going to see... Yeah, so, so how much damage are we hitting for a game? I know that I've been talking about Gothic uh, Crunch and... I don't think that we're hitting for enough here. I think they're just a little bit short. Uh, I believe I saw one power tablet uh, um, paired up with the choice mode as well. So from the looks of it, they're short. Uh, they definitely seem to be considering exactly what they want to do here, which, you know, kind of signals that they are short. They're going to choose not to Psychic Leap. They're going to choose to Techno Blast for 250 damage. And now this is where Sharon's Care proves itself as one of the most powerful cards in this deck. The potential just to wipe away all that work that Pato did here is going to be absolutely game-changing if they have it here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think... Um... That, that's really what we're going to be aiming for. Are we going to see that Sharon's care? Yeah. Um, I mean, they have an absolutely huge hand. You'd have to assume that they would have an out to maybe that Shady Dealing Centillion. Um, Maybe they have an out to that Arceus V Star as well. I'm going to go on the bench. And yeah, we do see that Ultra Ball coming out. So the big question is, is are they going to be able to get that Sharon's care here? We can only assume that this is going to lead to that Shady Dealings if they do have it in deck. So... This is going to be an absolutely critical turn. This is really, you know, like that swing turn. I'm in the Pokemon trading card game. Every single game really has that one breaking point turn where if you hit something, you're putting yourself in a great spot. And if you miss, you're putting yourself in a really rough spot. This definitely seems like one of those turns where um, they have a potential to really put themselves in the lead here. Oh, yeah. So we're going to see that Shady Dealings. Is it going to be the chair and scare? Uh, I think a lot of games are very divisive like this, uh, and I'm sure that uh, Monkey is totally thinking that out. What makes sense? Is Charon's Care absolutely the play? And I mean, yeah, it's, I, I, I don't see any other world where you'd want to do that, because you could also attach the energy to the Arceus V. It does open a realm. Oh! Ooh. Maybe it's a sign it's already in the hand? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's one of those things. Is it in the hand? Is it in the prize cards? Is it in the discard pile? When you're able to understand what's going on with your game, I think that's one of the biggest things that we could possibly um, explain when we're doing coaching on Metafy. I know like a lot of peeps play Pokemon blindly and you want to be able to find out where are your cards. Um, obviously here where there's no spectate mode, so we're just people chilling on Discord, all that kind of stuff. We're watching from Patricia's perspective, but I do want to see like if we saw it in the hand, you don't be able to see it, but is it there? And you can see Patricia's looking. Are there a couple copies of Charon's Care in the discard pile or in the prize cards? Yeah, I mean, I would only have to assume. So if there is, then I think you have to retreat. I'm going to attack with the healthy um, RCS V Star because you want to force that boss's orders out of Pato's hand here. So, yes, yeah, definitely seems like they are considering their actions. We do see the Scoop of Nut here, so they're going to be able to reset that Inteleon to prepare to use Shady Dealings next turn. But yeah, definitely a very, very. Uh, Interesting turn. I would have to assume that something's prized here based on the fact that we have not seen a Sharon's Care, or maybe they're just taking their time, you know, kind of thinking out, um, you know, all their actions because making a commitment to a supporter like that is a big play. So maybe they are kind of, you know, compartmentalizing their actions here, just, you know, trying to figure out exactly what they want to do. But yeah. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where uh, I know from knowing you personally, uh, we always make jokes in the group chat. Sometimes I go a little bit far, but uh, one of the ongoing jokes that's pretty family friendly that we make with Gabe is uh, you're the king of odds. What are the odds of having two Charons uh, here in your prize cards game? Just give us all the top of the I head. Definitely, Don't pull I definitely the say it's really... I definitely say it's really, really low here, and I think we just have to assume that they did prize a couple of Sharon's characters. There's no the way they had it in their hand, right? There's orders. just no way they missed that. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things where, fingers crossed, we're totally going to see exactly how, like, will they draw it if they got the knockout? Maybe that's what they're going for. This one survives, then they Charon's Care 1. I mean, it might work, right? Yeah, I mean, maybe they're just going to be trying to go after, you know, like, the boss, boss, boss um, strategy and hoping that they aren't able to boss those orders that V-Star maybe on the bench right now you know i'm kind of curious to see exactly their thought process here now we do see that the mu v max does have 180 damage on it so it is just going to fall to a trinity nova next turn so we have kind of seen that they have kind of made up their plan on exactly what they want to do and it looks like they're going to be going for that mu v max knockout and then maybe a mu v or a genesect v or maybe like the meloetta knockout soon like we've really seen that monkey has kind of figured out his next couple of turns here which is going to be knockout view um mute and then i'm going to have to assume it's going to be knockout something like a meloetta so very smart play there taking that uh knockout for the two prizes knowing that this mu v max has to come up which means that it's just going to get knocked out next turn so definitely really really top level play here by monk 
And yeah, we do just see Pato taking the knockout there. Going to be going down to two prizes. So really starting to heat up here, Zach. Definitely going to be a photo finish. Yeah, exactly. No, I think it's going to be really interesting. The thing... Oh, I'm totally clicking on the wrong prize card today. There we go. Uh, that's how the game's going to be going. The thing that I like about this for Patricia, because it's looking really good for Patricia, um, they have access to like their MUV Max getting knocked out. Then they go full on MUV Max. Um, I mean, it's one of those things that I guess they're trying to win the game next turn. And also, Monk can't necessarily put down another Arceus because it's just boss target. So, like, in, there's a world where I think that, like, Arceus goes attack, knocks out Mew, Arceus goes boss, knocks out whatever for 200 damage, like a Genesect. I think that's a really clear path to winning. On the other side, I mean, do, you, do we know if Patricia has enough left to get a knockout on this Arceus or anything like that? I believe that they're down a couple power tablets. We know that we see the belt on the active. I think they have just enough to get the... I think they have just enough to knock out the Arceus. But as we see, the path of the peak has came down. It seems like Monka was saving that so that they could use it on this swing turn because what they're doing is they're putting themselves one turn away from winning so they want to pair up a path of the peak with a marnie as a big major um power move here so we do see that as well and they get an old cemetery so it's kind of funny that pato actually didn't really have anything of use in that last hand huge huge hand and then monk was able to bail them out because now they have an old cemetery so you gotta expect that they are going to go all in here with those fusion strike systems trying to find that knockout yeah it's uh really really interesting how marnie uh, can be either helpful or not and i mean even with the ultra ball just pitching away those two battle vip pass it's looking really 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 good um for patricia okay. oh there's only so we... one tablets but there's the echoing horn so i think this game might just Ooh. come down to that echoing horn so yeah i think that pato pato actually might have this guaranteed i mean they have f three fusion strike systems a couple bosses orders left there's, there's the, the echoing, echoing horn. horn there we go yeah, boom so. i mean as long as they see this play as much as we do bringing up the arceus correctly i think we're gonna see it i think we're gonna see the knockout here peeps um that's game one it's best of three i do want to let people know that there's still another 33 minutes for them to play out the rest of their games so we are going to have, yeah, the, the heartbreak. This is why Echoing Horn's really good. The first time that I ever saw this was from Jade's at Sparkling Sil Valley. Um, absolutely telling me about Echoing Horn. I was like, really? Echoing Horn and Mew? Uh, so really interesting to see that um, being played here. I think yep. that's a... That, like you said, photo finish. I, I wasn't necessarily thinking Echoing Horn, but there's probably a reason why I'm on this side of the tables nowadays instead of uh, being on the other side of the table. I don't need to be thinking that hard about the game. I just need to be watching all the cool plays. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, Echoing Horn, like you said, you like really wasn't a card that people were thinking about playing in the Movie Max deck, and then we saw some tournament finishes where it did super, super well. And then, you know, people kind of realized, it was like, hey, you know, like this card helps against maybe something like a Duraludon VMAX. And, you know, more and more people, you know, started to find matchups that it could actually, you know, completely alter. And in that game, Pato won because of that horn. So, you know, really showing that card's strength, and they are going to be able to take that 1 0 lead here. But it looks like this hand is really, really mediocre here, Zach. Um, you know, Mew typically draws super, super well. You typically never really have to fear drawing these really, really, like, weird hands. But sometimes it does happen. And as we see, they kind of drew a bunch of nothing here. Yeah, I mean, there's really not that much. But, like, I mean, I, I guess we can't even see, like, a Marty or anything on any other side. Like, because uh, Monkey can't necessarily do anything when it comes down to, it, like, playing on their first turn. So... I don't know, like, we could just see a Battle VIP pass get dropped. We could see an Ultra Ball come and save the day. A lot of interesting things could just happen. I think Mew's always one top deck away. Even getting, like, a Kramomatic, discarding a Switch, then getting an Ultra Ball, discarding Mew, Boss's Orders. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can you kind of roll this game with one Genesect. I've had games where I draw one card off of uh, Fusion Strike System. That ends up being a Battle VIP pass or another Genesect. I draw another couple cards. And you can definitely get that whole bench set up. Now... Let's also be real, the game's looking a little bit grim from this standpoint. Yeah, no, I mean, one of the things that makes Mew so special is that it just plays so many, so many outs, and do we see when we see a Rotom Phone, so that's kind of an out, but the problem is, is that Monk has such a powerful turn, they were able to set up three Sobbles, we have the V on the bench as well, we also saw them discard a 
uh, professor's research in typically when you see your opponents um, you know like this card a card that's so powerful like a professor's research that can only mean that their hand is going to be incredibly powerful for the next turn so it looks like monk has a really really strong turn two setup maybe we see something like that marnie path combo just you know to try and slam the door on this game too as quickly as possible because pato's start is just so so weak here and we oh. just see the rotom phone so yeah, I don't know if I like the Rotom phone for an Elisa there, because there was also an Ultra Ball. I'm just not entirely yeah. sure like how that hand's going to play out. Um, yeah, yeah, Heartbreak Emote is definitely uh, something that... Uh, Maybe they realize it. <laughs> right? Like, you, you, sometimes you can just feel the actual heart breaking into two, and I think that's something that's really, really interesting. Uh, after playing PTCG Live, we don't have those heartbreaks. We have the, the thumbs down kind of thing. But we are seeing a Marnie... Uh, so, I think what they were expecting was Pato not to have such a weak start, so they chose to discard their research, and they're now put in an awkward spot where they only had that Marnie, because, you know, you can't really expect Mew VMAX to brick, so they, um, you know, they discard their research, and then it's like, well, shoot, they have a dead hand, and I have to play the Marnie because I need to find something like a Drizzle, something like a Water Energy, something like a Double Turbo, so that actually helps Pato a lot here. Um, so, you know, the fact that they discarded that research turn one actually kind of um, took away an option for them. Typically, um, I like to keep multiple, you know, um, you know, like different types of supporters in my hand because you know it opens up all your options there but monk unfortunately took that away and was able to potentially bail out pato here with that marnie yeah and the other thing too that should be noticed that like path of the peak would make uh patricia very vulnerable here i think it's something that if unless they just top deck raw uh stadium there's nothing else that could really happen here for them right like their hand would just be yeah. like, cool, Elsa Sparkle. Maybe we can get off an attack for 210. That might be cool, but you can't play Elsa Sparkle and Boss in the same turn. Yeah, you know, and as we know, 210 damage is not enough to knock out that V Star. And then, you know, you can only assume something like a Sharon's Care would just come out very, very quickly. So we do see that Drizzle coming up. Maybe we're going to see something for like a scoop up net so they can use Trinity Charge this turn paired up with a Path of the Peak. And yep, I it looks like that's exactly what they're going to go for because they can't attack with the trinity nova this turn because they don't have um three energy on the v-star but they are going to be able to use that rcs v's trinity charge to be able to power up that rcs v-star on that bench and now this is going to be a huge turn for pato pato needs to top deck something to be able to get them out of this um you know at this path of the peak lock if they are able to top deck out they're going to be in an okay spot but if they aren't, they're going to be facing down two V stars with so much. Um, they, yeah, like they just have to go through so much if they don't get the path of the, or if they don't bump the path of the peak here. So yeah, really big top deck here. Yeah, I think and nope, I don't, I don't yeah. think so. Like maybe like even at this point, there's the Arceus V star all powered up. Are, I, I, are we going to see like Meloetta? Meloetta can't even get the knockout here because of Arceus having 220, um, unless I'm doing my yeah. math wrong. No, yeah, I didn't. Um, 7 times 3 is 21, so <laughs> looks like they are going to be a little bit short from getting it. Um, they choose to not get some... Okay, so they are going to get something like a Genesect here. Definitely a smart play, just because it turns a stadium out. Oh, well, I, I mean, guess you not have to go from UV Max because you yeah. can't get Genesect under Path, I think. Even then, like, I guess, I don't even know what I like here. Yeah, I mean, they're, yeah, because they just sacrificed their entire hand. And now something like a stadium, you know, like if it's something like an old cemetery or something like a training court, that is actually not an out. So they now have to draw um, into something like a rose tower. So, I mean, looking at um, looking at Patricia's list, they do have that peony. Peony would be a god oh, top yeah. deck. Could you imagine yeah. going peony? Oh, I mean, even peony, like, I guess they'd have to get rose tower. Um, rose tower quick ball. Probably. Yeah, Rose Tower Quick Ball might not be too bad because Peony only grabs item cards or trainer cards, right? So you can't necessarily yeah. just rip out the Genesect from your deck. So it could be really interesting from that standpoint. But Ooh, on the so other we... hand, like, we're just not even seeing a knockout on anything else. Like, this Mew could just, like, we could also just rip a uh, Fusion Strike Energy and get the knockouts. Yeah, so... Uh... <laughs> Right here, we see that they did not have a Sharon's Care, and they only had the one Water Energy. So, did did Monkamarni himself into a dead hand? Wow. Um, this just turned from absolutely terrible. 
to actually a pretty okay spot for Pato. Now, their hand is obviously only going to be two cards, but it's just like, now we're in a really weird spot, Zach. It, it, yeah, it's it, we're kind of in a game where it's just like, what does this Arceus do? Because you can't use Charon's Care and attack with Arceus in the same turn. We might just see the Arceus hit for the 110 with the double turbo energy. Like, um, yeah, so it looks like their hand was dead. Yeah, they just they drew into absolutely nothing off that Marnie, and they chose to fully commit to the star birth path of the peak trinity nova play which left their hand completely dead and now they're going to be living off the prize cards but i will definitely say that there's a pretty good chance that they find something as this rcs v starter deck has so many outs to things like um drizzles and intellions and stuff like that but yeah this is definitely one of the weirdest mew versus oh, rcs games i've ever seen zach yeah, I was going to say, I would say not to play down that uh, Mew. It's one of those things where if you get a quick ball, you might want to have it for a Genesect in the future. Um, or just like for yeah. things like Ultra Ball, we can see like there's potential outs and that could have been an out. Um, lots of interesting plays here. It just depends on what's going to be going on. Like, I mean, Patricia's already down to two prize cards left. This game like just shows you that Mew with nothing is still often better than most other decks. Yeah. So we do see the quick shooting come out. I'm curious where the quick shooting is going to go. I, I can only imagine it's going to be on the MUV. And we also saw that Melanie there. So there's no guarantee that a Trinity Nova is actually going to happen here. Looks like we do also see that Shady Dealings Drizzle come out. So like the real big question here, Zach, is does Monk have that double turbo energy? If they do have the double turbo energy, they're going to be able to take the knock onto the Mellow Water and they're going to put themselves in a really strong spot. But if they miss, then... Mellow what is just going to keep doing 140 yep. damage over, over again. And it's just, you know, it really is looking like this is kind of the turn where it's going to determine a lot. And we see the Rihon come out. So, I, I so mean, they do play the Ry Rihon can search out a double turbo energy. But they already Melanie. That's the issue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. That's why. You can only play one supporter per turn. Um, also, anyone who's playing in real life at Salt Lake City coming up, first and foremost, you should probably pick up some coaching. Second off, when you're not playing online, remember that there's nothing that tells you you can't do more than X action per turn. Uh, maybe it's a good idea to get some good games out there. Just throwing out some word of advice, because even for myself, you just like look at the thing and you're like, oh, what's going on? Oh, what is they that? They left it axe. So now Pato is actually we incredibly close to the game. I definitely would probably cram a Matic here with yeah. the Ultra Ball and I guess something like a Rose Tower. If they're able to get that Rose Tower, yeah, we do see it. There's a huge oh! flip in the Come on, Rose Tower. Come on, Rose Tower. Rose Tower is in the deck. Abilities are back on. This is kind of crazy. Zach, I love to say that the fact this game is not already over kind of shows the strength of Mew, but we see three just really bad cards here. I mean, yes, they can use the boss's orders now, I guess, which actually does um, put them really close to the game next turn. So I think what their goal is going to be is to use this uh, knockout here on the Sobble to then follow up with a rope. So definitely looking like Pato's actually in a pretty decent spot here. Well, this game we, completely changed. You said we saw, we saw the Raihan last turn, right? Yeah, so, so they're gonna I think getting knock a knockout. Out. I think getting a knockout there is already is is a bit of a mistake, because um, that does activate the Raihan. If we just attacked into the Arceus, what's it gonna do? Charon's evolve, like that's kind of the way yeah. that I was looking at it. I think that it was um, actually completely incorrect there um, to go bring that up there. I, I, it's one of those things where it's more of an interesting play, but it does open up that path. Uh, you can see the thought the... process behind Pato. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. so you you're one press card away, okay. but. Hmm. Yeah, so I definitely think that's valid, though. I guess what they're trying to say is that, okay, I have the rope in hand. All I need is something like a Mew VMAX now to be able to get the knockout. But as we do see from last turn, we saw that they did flash the Raihan. So definitely going to be a big turn here. And now Pato is on a one turn clock. I mean, um, Monk is going to take the knockout here, go down to two prizes, probably going to stick something like a Path of the Peak in play. Oh, we don't see the Path of the Peak, so maybe they're out of paths here. Um, so yeah, this is going to be definitely a critical, critical turn here to see exactly what they're able yeah, to do. Yeah, looking at the list, like, there's only yeah. two Paths of the Peak, so like, I mean, maybe Patricia could draw into a Genesect or an Ultra Ball or something, but yeah, we see that Raihan coming down, punishing that play, and even with like a Mew VMAX top deck, what are we going to be copying? 
with cross fusion strike with all those double turbo energies escape rope doesn't yep. steal the game so it might have even been more advantageous for that meloetta to knock something out and leave that sobble in play um just for escape rope fodder um i really like yeah i, I don't know i'm, I'm looking at the play and i think it's like kind of causing this domino effect you could always top deck and i mean patricia has got a little bit lucky in the later game especially with that cramomatic flip will they be able to just like draw out of this but that arc is likely not going down this game yeah, I could probably say confidently that the Arceus is not going to go down. I think that Pado's main route to winning is going to be using something like that Escape Rope or Boss Orders. We also see the Path of the Peak come in play. So now they have only two outs. It's going to be Rose Tower or it's going to be Cremomatic. Nothing else actually gets them game here. So it's a huge top deck. And yeah, we just see the Quick Ball. So it looks like that Monk is going to be able to get this game if they have an energy to be able to treat the Inteleon. So... Yeah, definitely looking like a pretty con. Yeah, it, pretty it looks pretty convincing. Game. I think yeah. that I think that yeah, yeah. Um, cool. kind of uh, greedy play on knocking out the Saba is really what's causing this loss here. I, I well, I mean, it's not over until it's over, but like it, it looking pretty over at this point. We'll see. Um, I mean, it, there's always an opportunity, but I also don't even think I would have grabbed anything out with Quick Ball. I think it's just much better to hold that into the hand in case you want to get Cramomatic. Um, and here we are going to see, are we going to see a boss's orders? Retreats. Evo incense, that's not a boss's order. It doesn't look so... like there's boss's orders at this point, no. But anyway, that's honestly fine, I mean. But it does give Pato one more turn to be able to come back in this game. Going out of one prize. Monk has basically said, you have to top deck here, or it's over. Yeah, we just see the power tablet. Looks like... Uh, Monk is going to be able to take game two, and we're going to be going into game three here. Yep, so we're going to go ahead and reset this. Um, all this good stuff. So yeah, I think that play did end up causing uh, Patricia to lose that game. Um, if there wasn't no Raihan, I think that might have just like taken that off completely. There's only 18 minutes left. I guess we'll have to see how um, it went out. Did Patricia say if they're going first or second? I believe they're going first. I think that I makes saw. sense, so that Mew can have that same predatory game. With 18 minutes left, I think it's going to be completely fine. Yeah. And here we have it. Patricia is going to be starting this game off. So we do One... see the mulligan there. Really, really happy. Um, probably for Pado, because that hand was not looking good, Zach. <laughs> yeah, the, the hand was not looking good. Kind of looking like game two. I, I find this matchup typically favor for Mew, as long as Mew's yeah. able to get set up. And uh, you want to... There's a... Orc Wario's not the worst start... Yeah. Um, it, it's not the best start. I don't think it's necessarily too great in this matchup because even with double turbo energy, uh, Arceus can still hit for 160, but it doesn't necessarily uh, change too much stuff up. I think it's one of those yeah. things where it's battle VIP pass is uh, probably a much welcome start. Yeah, so we do see the Battle of APS coming out. Probably going to be getting that Mew V and the Genesec V. And then I would have to assume we're going to see something else like a Cremomatic to maybe go for that double VIP pass paired up with something like an Ultra Ball. So relatively decent hand here. But, you know, there's going to be a lot of things that Pado actually has to discard. You know, typically you just want to draw into two or three uh, um, VIP passes on turn one just to get it over with but here we're gonna have to see chromomatic flips come in to be able to get those vip passes so really big flips here we oh. do see another heads yeah so <laughs> there, going there's the battle vip pass like it's one of those things uh patricia had a lot of things going their way last game uh chromomatic was one of them it seems to be continuing off that luck really rubbing off and i mean i i know a lot of people really just despise chromomatic because it's a coin flip card usually i just like playing it to thin from your hand but when it when it pops off like this I'm sure Monk's just like, are you actually serious that Mew's getting these heads right now? <laughs> like, are you absolutely serious? Maybe they're like, I don't know. We're all at home, right? So you never know what's going on the other side. You might be throwing things around your uh, keyboard on the floor. You know what I'm saying? One of those rage moments. I mean, we've all had them, right? <laughs> Yeah, I know. I mean, I think that Chromatic is such a important card in the Mew Max deck because it gives the deck such a high ceiling. If you just run hot with those flips, your deck almost can never be beaten. So that's why I think that Chromatic is such a good card because it makes this deck's um, ceiling 
pretty much limitless. I mean, when the deck runs correctly as it should, it is just so, so difficult to beat. And as we see, Pato has double chromatic to dig for that stadium card if a Path to Peak comes into play next turn. And they also have a Sparkle as well. And we can only imagine that they are probably going to be digging for something like a boss's order. So Pato really got everything that they need in this hand, kind of playing with house money here. So definitely in a great spot for sure. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's kind of crazy. It's, it depends if we're gonna see another Arceus come down. If it's gonna go, if anything is gonna go into Patricia's favor or not, uh, because we could just see that another Chromatic Head's gonna boss or a Power Tablet or a Choice Belt and really put that Arceus in a tough spot. Now Arceus does have 250 HP, so we gotta factor in that like the Big Charm is gonna give it more HP. We are gonna factor in that Mew V Max is doing minus 20 damage with the Double Turbo Energy. So uh, we got to do some quick maths. I think it needs two damage modifiers, right? 190 for a Techno Blast, plus a Choice yep. Belt, plus a Power Tablet. Uh, this is really going to be huge. And it, I think we're just going to see keep... Oh! Okay, I was yeah, necessarily I expecting the supporter there. I, I, I felt like my, my inner Zach vibes were telling me that this was a dead hand. <laughs> so we'll have to see. Yeah, so we do see the other Arceus V come out, which is really what they were looking for. And we also see a Keep Calling, so... Pato had a great turn, and then Monk was able to respond with a really, really strong turn here, being able to get those four benched Pokemon on the field, going to be able to set up and make it so that if a boss's orders comes out, it's not, you know, it isn't really um, game over because they're going to be able to respond with that Arceus V-Star at the very least. So definitely really, really good starts by both of our players here. And yep, it's definitely going to look like a pretty good game. Yeah, I, I'm, the thing that like kind of wonders me is that we discarded um, the other Chromomatic instead of the Ellis of Sparkle, considering Boss's Order seems like such a great play to put you on that 2-2-2 two, two, two path. Um, so now it looks like we're li like wasting resources instead of having that extra Chromomatic flip or other options in general. Um, kind of an interesting play there from Patricia. I'd love to hear their thoughts on it. Now, we do see a Boss's Orders, but we're still behind a little bit um, for those numbers. Are we going to be able to get them? Because this could just be a yeah. simple Charon's Care afterwards. Yeah, so I think the thought process behind this from um, Pato is that they're going to be able to hit this, and we recognize that they do not have a Water Energy or a Double Turbo Energy on the field. So if they want to actually use something like a Trinity Nova, they can actually use Sharon's Care this turn. So I think they're kind of playing with that, um, you know, knowledge of what the deck is actually capable of doing. So if they choose to Sharon's Care, they will be able to wipe the damage off but then they're gonna have to use something like a trinity charge but if they choose to use something like a melanie then they're not um you know able to heal the arceus and that v star will fall very quickly i i personally think it's okay to use something like a trinity nova here because you just need to get the damage on the field you got to put the pressure on mew one of the big things that you know arceus v star and Teleon struggles with is that during those you know turns two and three of the game they're not really you know like they're just not um you know able to put a ton of pressure onto that mew v max deck if they aren't able to use something like a trinity nova so i definitely agree with going for that trinity nova here and sacrificing the v Nice. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's fine. I, I guess if uh, Patricia's able to foresee that, maybe that's something that even I missed. Um, I don't know. I think it would have been, like, at least the Karma Medic would have been something that I would have tried to hold on, especially considering it's out to a path to the peak and all these good things. Um, although, it does, yeah, I do agree, you need to kind of put this uh, pressure on. It does turn it into kind of a four-prize card game, or a four-turn yeah. game, so you're just like, attack, 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 knocking out VMAX, knocking out VMAX. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of those yep. things where I think that um, they both have their game plans set, although it does look at this point that if everything works in Patricia's favor, they could actually win one turn before Monk. Um, and that's what I can kind of see going on. Now, the other factor that we got in here, there's 12 minutes left. That should be enough time. There's no plus three turns at this event, uh, just because how naturally quick online can be and how everything else goes. Um, so it is one of those things that we might see some kind of prize card game. The minute the time is called, that's the player's last turn. They finish off the turn. That's it. We're going to be moving on. Yeah. So we do see the Farfetch that has been benched. What I can tell from this is that they're probably going to try and force, uh, Pato to take a seven prize card game, forcing them to go through three V stars and then the Farfetch'd. Farfetch being able to knock out that Mew VMAX next turn. So you can kind of see that they're trying to prepare for the next, you know, two to three turns here. They get the three energy on to the 
and B, and they also got the Path of the Peak in play as well. And it looks like that Pato has that Peony to be able to find a stadium next turn but we see them choose not to use it here because they're just going to be able to get the knockout here they're going to be attaching some energies as well and they're kind of kind of be preparing for that next turn because they don't really need a stadium here because they don't need to hit 310 this turn right they only need to hit i believe 120 to be able to get that knockout so there's no real reason to go you know like all in on something that is pretty much already about to be knocked out so smart play there not using that peony and action is back on to monk here yeah exactly i mean we do see Pat patricia getting those two prize cards really quickly so will that be enough will we see down something else will we see that far-fetched come out there's a lot of like interesting things are we gonna see far-fetched boss like that's something that could be interesting um, I know that we've tested a little bit with Farfetch. Do you think Farfetch is still necessary in these lists? Like, what are your current thoughts on Farfetch? So I can definitely see the thought process behind it, forcing them to take a um, six prize card game. But there's just been so many matchups where, like, you just want to win the game off going Marnie Path and then, you know, and then like their board state just kind of starting to crumble apart so there have been so many situations where i personally have not used the farfetch but there definitely has been some spots where i've actually won games because of it you know like it's you know like it's almost like do you really want to commit one spot to a quote-unquote niche card when you could maybe play something else like an extra ultra ball or some other type of consistency card but i can definitely see the reasoning behind the card I personally right now don't play it. Maybe that'll change, you know? Maybe we'll see Farfetch'd win the set here, and then I'll be convinced to add it back in. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where, like... I don't know. Farfetch is interesting. I, I think it's, like like you said, offering that kind of seven prize card game, um, really offering up that extra prize card. The same way that Patricia just did, that Meloetta doesn't necessarily add anything to the mix. So when it comes to drawing prize cards, um, it, it's not really beneficial to knock out because... We're still back on the same path. That Pokemon was more or less a meat shield um, than anything else. So many M things. Meloetta, meat shield, Metify. Um, my brain's going kind of crazy, but um, I don't know. We do see that bump to the path. Is this going to be enough for Patricia to draw through the rest of the game? Like, there's not really that much um, cards left in their deck. There's not that much time. Like, this game's, like, pretty much in the thick of it. Yeah, so we can kind of see that Pat's... Um game plan here is going to be to be able to get this knockout here and then use something like an echoing horn to be able to go echoing horn bosses orders the rcsv because monk is actually two turns away from winning the game because they can the bosses orders knock out the movie max on the bench and then they can knock out something like an oracorio as well so this game is really going to come down to these last two turns you know i can say it's pretty safe to say that this game will end in two turns and we can see that um Pato is kind of starting to plan that final turn after they get the knockout here, digging for that Echoing Horn and Stadium card. It looks like they got the Peony, so they got the Stadium, but the thing is that they don't have the Horn just yet, so... Yeah, I mean, it, it could just be like last game, we might just see a quick Marnie, Marnie into the Horn, and uh, that, that could literally be everything for this game, right? I think um, it, it's safe to say that this game looks like it's in Patricia's control comparatively to last game yeah yeah so definitely like one of the things about this game is that monk has the boss's orders to knock out the mew to put them one turn away from winning the game they have to do that so with the knowledge of them being forced to do that then that leaves pato with a gigantic hand which could potentially get them the boss's orders knockout on the rcs v star but here this is where the farfetch is going to come into play i can assume that what they're going to do is get a double turbo energy and a boss's orders to be able to knock out the mu v max to try and upset that prize trade forcing them to go down to one prize here knock out the farfetch so farfetch tier actually zach is going to prove to be very useful if they're going to actually choose to use it here yeah, no, I think um, we'll have to see it. Also, like, I mean, I guess it doesn't really change too much out of the game. However, we do see, like, if they are going for boss's orders on that Mew, it does leave that boss's orders open in Patricia's hands. And that could be really interesting. Although it does put a clear, like, one-two punch on Monk's side. So Monk could go yeah. knock it on the Mew VMAX, then boss's orders knocking out a Genesect. Um, we do got to watch out, though, because that Genesect does have 190 HP, 190 hp minus the 20 from or Aquario gives it kind of that 210 which is just out of the realm of arceus's trinity nova that might be something that monk might not be necessarily factoring in here and we might just see that like 
uh, upsetting 180 damage hitting on the Genesect. What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I definitely think that Koryo is super, super good in this matchup, you know, just making it a little bit harder for Monk to be able to get those Boss's Orders knocks out on Genesect. Now, we saw them took a relatively long time to go through Starbirth here, and we also recognize that Monk is down three double turbo energy, and they still have five prize cards left. So, they haven't slammed down the energy onto that Farfetch just yet, so maybe they prized it, and yet, that's a sign I think that they might have prized it, Zach, because they definitely would have chosen to knock out the Mew Max if they had the opportunity here. So, yeah, definitely... Definitely an interesting play. Maybe they, oh. yeah. So that's so they must surprise the last double turbo because there's no reason not to go after the MUV Max there. No, not the at all. Turbo. I mean, unfortunate for um, unfortunate for Monk uh, with the prizing this game. And I guess at this point we're just gonna see Mew attack, like yeah, really just so attack. 210, yeah. 270. I think they're still a little bit short. They can't get the last one with Peony, but it does cut off that Charon's Care play, right? So I think um, this is looking really good for Patricia. Whether or not it comes down to prize cards or anything, I think they're going to win the game no matter what. Yeah, so, okay, so this previous turn that Monk made, they chose to um, promote the Farfetch'd, assuming that the double turbo was in deck if they had chosen to uh um, you know promote something like a drizzle even if they didn't have on um, the double turbo they were still going to be able to use something like a boss's orders to knock out the mu max on the bench so that was a really really big um misplay there from monk not checking their prizes realizing that that final double turbo was in the prizes if they had known that uh, beforehand if they had checked their prizes they would have been able to kind of completely avoid this situation and probably would have been in a decent spot to actually win this game so you know zach kind of like as you said medify coaching definitely is something that can you know really help you know certain players kind of learn like those little um, nuances in the game so that was just something that was super super small that ended up being super big just because i didn't check their price cards exactly and it could have been huge like we already saw the finals of the world's 2012 i often bring it up to when i'm coaching on medify uh harrison levin versus igor costa harrison levin was favored to win that matchup went for a play as if they had everything in their prize cards went for that only play zeroed in on it they didn't check their prize cards earlier that game lost their game because their shaman was prized now it's one of those things where had they played differently or identified that they still would have had win in a different way maybe to a lesser degree but it's one of those things where it's the only way that you could have won at that point because if you zero in and you have things prized it can just be terrible um so it's, it's one of those things prize checking is one of the most important things to note when it comes to playing pokemon in general it's huge now the one thing yeah. that i'm kind of like worried about kind of jumping back and, oh what are we just gonna see yeah. oh they chose to rope do they not have a switch and uh well this doesn't get them game i don't Oh, uh, they, they, they go for, they use the Oracorio attack. Oh, Oracorio attack, yeah, yeah. So, Oracorio typically is not used, but it looks like they are just going to be able to use Glistening Droplets. We never really see this actually be used, so it's super cool to see that Glistening Droplets. And Mew Max is going to be able to take that game two games to one. Pretty, pretty close set there. But, you know, we saw that misplay from Monk that kind of ruined their entire strategy. So, you know, like, a little bit of a less exciting finish there. But, overall, a great set in general and Congratulations to Pato for advancing to top four with that Mute VMAX deck. Yeah, it's one of those things where Mute VMAX absolutely uh, kind of crushing it as we all expected. Um, really weird game from Arceus V-Star. Overall, it's one of those things where I'd like to... Uh, we, we could talk about it a little bit in the booth where I think we're still waiting on one more game. I'm just getting things reset here um, so that we have things ready to go for the top four. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. I think we have everything set up. And there's still a couple minutes left um, going in there. So Gabe and I will catch you back in the casting booth. Um, I'll catch you over there in the casting booth in one second, Gabe.
So here we have it. We are back in the castings booth, and it's uh, it's one of those things where uh, that game was kind of crazy. I don't know if you uh, thought it was going to be that how that was going to play out. I know Muse typically favored. What did you think about that game, Gabe? Yeah, no, I definitely think that matchup is relatively close, but so much of that matchup does simply come down to does the Marnie path stick? And as we saw in that final game, I thought that Pato played relatively well, managing their stadiums so that something like a Path of the Peak paired up with a Marnie did not actually, you know, completely ruin their board state. And, you know, we saw that Mute VMAX was able to take that set two games to one really really close though and congratulations to both players a shout out to monk as well for getting top eight still a fantastic accomplishment you know once again over 300 players biggest brilliant stars event so congratulations to both of them and i'm excited to see what pato can do in the top four looks like we got juan andre as well moving on to top four with that arceus inteleon dark box type of deck and then we saw sir schnips with that mu v max deck as well moving on to top four we still got one game still going though yeah i think that one game is just uh in timeout rules so like we were talking about it is going to be um whoever's going to be up on prize cards the last turn's final turn uh i'm looking in the limitless chat looks like everything's all good one thing that i do want to do is we're gonna check over uh patricia's deck list so let's jump over there gabe see exactly um what we got going on so it's not an arceus v star deck let me pull up the right one we're gonna find this deck list real quick uh, so we can see exactly what's going on. So we do have Patricia's list right there. And this is a Mu V Max list. So advancing onto the top four, is there anything like in your personal list that you would add in here? Or what do you feel about Patricia's list, Gabe? I don't think that. Like I definitely think that this list is super super strong one of the things that people are you know kind of starting to realize is that if you are not playing things like psychic energy in the deck you don't need something like a fog crystal anymore so it opens up a lot more spaces for cards like peony to be included so i really like the peony peony is a great counter to things like path of the peak also can be pretty pretty good in mirror because oftentimes in the mirror match there will come a turn where you need to hit three tablets plus something like a belt to be able to get the knockout so peony is really really good to be able to do that also just a great card in general I would say that you like the one negative behind the card though is that sometimes it can start to um clog up your hands in the you know to be like the early turns of the game sometimes it can kind of hurt you but overall it definitely looks like a really really cool list they were you know able to fit in something like the rotom phone and the chromatic which is definitely something that i really really like i think that both of those are definitely a must have in these type of mu decks right now because of things like path of the peak being so prevalent in the meta and that is kind of like the main way that decks are able to beat mu so you want to be able to counter that one card that really is the only thing that can stop this deck from winning every turn of its act yeah so i mean i think the other thing about peony too is that you can't play peony and boss in the same turn that's one thing that always um kind of gets me and i'm always just like i don't know if i want to play the peony although it can get some cool things like echoing horn and escape rope so there's a lot of really cool plays it's one of those like personal preference cards in my opinion yeah no i totally agree for sure other than that though the list is pretty standard we see the 4-3 movie max the four genesec b two meloetta and the one um or choreo so zach what are kind of like your thoughts on the choreo in the deck do you think it's worth it you know because it's super super good in matchups like dark box also pretty good against things like the mirror match and you know as we saw there uh it was pretty pretty good against rcs in teleon so i definitely think it's pretty cool but i was kind of curious exactly what your thoughts are once you're done handling your phone message. oh yeah yeah we're, <laughs> we're all good uh i'm just trying <laughs> to make sure that everything's all good um so it's one of those things where we're just dealing with a timeout situation obviously both players want to win and they're both trying to uh plead their case i think there's literally it's black or white um uh, it seems like they're saying it's some suspicious time plays or anything. I feel like most players think that there's suspicious time when they lose on time rules. Not saying anything, anything against any players. Uh, one thing that I do recommend to anyone doing while you are playing in a tournament, stream the game. At least that gives you some stream proof. Um, it, it's one of those things where some players can play a little bit slower on their actions too. PTC Joe does a really good job with the 15 second timer anyways to automatically mitigate that. If you're playing a little bit slow, you're going to be on the heels of that timer. I'm not saying that you can't um, manipulate that and that players do not manipulate that, but it's not one of those things. If a player never called judge, it doesn't necessarily help anything. It looks like it's going to be the game going on to Giovanni with Jolteon. Jumping to what Gabe said, I wasn't a fan of Oracorio um, until yesterday. So I liked Oracorio at one point because of Dark Toolbox. Um, and that deck was very prevalent after the full grip games tournament. 
I thought that a lot of players were playing that. It looked like um, one of those things where we were going to see a lot more Dark Toolbox in this format. That doesn't necessarily seem to be the case because of all the Arceus V-Star going on. That being said, I took Oracori out of my list, but after seeing Natalie Miller win um, Brisbane, I think that Oracori is good in the chance that it's a diversified single prize card Pokemon that you could play against new VMAX Mirror so that you have two single prize card Pokemon that you could put in play after going first. So you can't um, get the escape rope, turn one, Miletius Echo, Knockout. So it's a little bit of an advanced play, but having more single prize card Pokemon in Mew VMAX is very good to prevent your opponent from going Miletius Echo, um, Escape Rope. So I like it more as a diversified Meat Shield than anything else in it, but it can offer. I mean, you, there's some cool plays. We saw that Patricia was able to use Glistening Droplets to win the game. We see that the minus 20 can be effective especially if they brought up a genesec there's a lot of things that can happen so overall we're good i think it's yeah. a, i think it's a good card for sure yeah so we do also see kind of going into our top four so it's going to be the top four right now we have arceus and Talion with the dark box package we see that the dark box package includes the two of uh baby galarian moltres also the Evil Tall with a Cry Destruction. They were able to take out Mew VMAX in top eight. Two games to zero. Then we got Pato as well. Going to be going against Giovanni. And then Giovanni is going to be going against Pato. Yep. And then we got Sure Schnips going to be going against Juan Andre. So looks like we've got our top four ready to go. I'm um, going to be pretty exciting to see what happens. I'm not exactly sure which game we're getting into, but it looks like they're already starting. And we have Pato and also Sure Schnips as well is hopping into that top cut match number one. So uh we got some options here for us to what do we what do we want what, what do you want to see people get in the chat right now put that in the chat right now we'll go with whatever anyone wants to see do we want to see jolteon yeah mu v max or mu v max is going to be on stream do you want to see arceus um was it, it's an arceus kind of inteleon with dark or we got jolteon so i think i'm fine against either although it is uh juan andre is our number one seed at the event i think that'd be a really interesting match to watch and i know a lot of players might like arceus but let us know in the chat right now. You got your opportunities for like maybe the next 30 seconds. I'm going to cough quick. Someone see, that's said the, that's the, see, that's one thing that I like. I like putting the mic on and off. The nice new HyperX mic. Not sponsored by HyperX, but I could be. HyperX, uh, hit me up. So it looks like we want to see Jolteon. Jolteon, Jolteon, Jolteon. Uh, yeah, we're going to go with Jolteon at this point, peeps. So uh, Gabe and I will be right back, and we're going to be jumping into that game. All right. some water quickly yep uh, and we're back on so i'm gonna wait gabe's gonna get some water really quickly i'm gonna get everything updated here so it's gonna be the jolteon v max um matchup so we're gonna pull up the jolteon here i mean jolteon's a deck that a lot of people thought would die off um with this format and i think uh a lot of people might have been wrong yeah definitely everyone wants to see jolteon so we're definitely gonna see jolteon play it out um just want to make sure that everyone else is uh kind of here at this point And let's reset this timer as well so we can have the proper timer going on. Um, it is 50 minutes best of three, so let's refresh that. All right. And let's update it. So Patricia is now 12 and three. That's a crazy record. Uh, that's literally like going four and one. That's an 80% win percentage off the top of my head. If anyone wants to help me uh, do some quick math, that'd be cool. But um, I think yeah. that's what it works out to be. And it's going to be against Giovanni P. Um, Giovanni is a player that, I mean, I, I want to see how they're playing this deck because it seems like only them and Josh Sutherland are the only players that are playing this. Yeah, so Giovanni Pergallo actually got top four at the 2019 uh, LAIC International Championship, so definitely a very, very strong Pokemon TCG player. We do see them playing the Jolten VMAX. Jolten VMAX was a deck that a lot of people were like, oh, this deck absolutely sucks now because of Manaphy. But when you look at it, the majority of decks don't actually play that card. I would say every 10 to 15 lists actually play it. So that basically means that Jolten kind of remains the same. Like it didn't really get worse at all. And it gained things that they can play. You know, some lists like to play things like Ultra Ball, 
you still got the things like Pass to the Peak as well, Cheryl, Fan of Waves. You still kind of got that disruption package. So when you look at the list that Giovanni is actually playing, there are no new cards from the Stars expansion. So it's just plain old Jolteon right now. So many people wrote it off, Zach, and it's really cool to see it finally back in that relevant, um, you know, yeah, relevant place in the format. So yeah, looks like we're getting into the game though. Looks like Giovanni and Pato are ready to kick it off here we're going to be showing you view max once again against jolteon so hopefully this is going to be another fantastic game yeah no i think it's going to be uh really one of those things where is it going to be a fantastic game or not i like i i think jolteon uh, in the last format is slightly unfavored in this matchup i don't think it's a bad matchup by any chance but it's one of those things where i think it's slightly unfavored and it's also weird to that they're not playing any ultra ball i think i think most lists would like to add one ultra ball just to have the additional outs to either get a jolteon or maybe clear your hand out a little bit but it does make it a uh, quite interesting overall um it just goes to show that the game you don't necessarily need to once you have a deck it could be good for a while and uh giovanni's really pulling in there because people are walking away with some sweet metafy buckaroonies um two thousand dollars of prize support sponsored by metafy and to anyone who's tuning into the stream for the first time i know that i haven't been on metafy for too long i only started uh late january but I've been loving it so far. It really gives me a great opportunity to help grow the community. Um, I know a lot of coaching is a bit of a controversial subject in Pokemon. Um, I know a lot of people might frown upon it or might not necessarily want to admit that they're getting coached or anything like that. I think it's more empowering um, and there's definitely some power to it. I, I recently had a success story where one of my students, I had a session earlier this week, they were able to make top eight at the Brisbane Regionals in Masters um, and that could really pay off People don't necessarily look at coaching like an investment, but especially for juniors and seniors, um, if you're able to win a regionals or something like that and get some travel awards, it can be quite beneficial on top of just getting the confidence and the knowledge. If you don't know what's going on, play, like choose from the world's best. There's so many great coaches on the co on the website. I know that both Gabe and myself coach um, all different aspects, all different rates. And even like if you're not choosing us, Azul GG, uh, one of the most known players in the game. You can get coached by Tord Reckliff if you really want. Uh, so many great people to choose from. So check out Metify.gg, pick up some coaching. Uh, I'll let Gabe put in a shameless plug there if you want to, buddy. Uh, it's up to you. Yeah. Um, I also coach on Metify at the Metify GG slash Gabriel Smart. You know, if you ever want to pick up some coaching from me, you know, if you ever need help getting ready for one of those events, you know, we got so many one case happening, so many regionals coming up, you know, we got EUIC. So we got so many events that I would love to help you guys for. So yeah, uh, super, super cool that Metify is hosting this event. Make sure to go check out their website. They're doing an amazing thing for the Pokemon community. Zach and them are doing so many great things for the community. So massive shout outs to them for really, you know, pioneering the online era right now as we kind of start that transition period to major IRL events still really see that the you know online scene still matters we're gonna still be seeing many big um, tournaments on the limitless platform so it is really really cool to see you know like everyone's still kind of teaming up and hosting fantastic events for everyone to enjoy that are also free I mean this is amazing I mean 2000 prize pool which is also free Zach I mean that is absolutely awesome. I would play in it. Like, if I was not here, I'd be playing this tournament 100,000 million percent. Like, that's 100% what I'd like to say. Um, $2,000 free tournament sounds great. You could be in your pajamas. You could be chilling on the iPad. It's a little bit of Pokemon and chill action going on. Um, yep. There are some advantages to playing Pokemon at home. Like, you're cozy. You did not have to wake up an hour early to drive. And I think, like, um, now that we're seeing in real life play come back, I really do like the blend between both. Uh, to me, I think it's, like, a huge kind of aspect that I do enjoy about Pokemon. Like, if this was an event, I, I've definitely casted some in-real-life events. It's one of those things where, like, you have to drive there. you got to wake up early. This saves so much more time, and it is more efficient. And we can show you games seamlessly like this. Yeah, no, I, like, when PTCG Live comes out, I can just, you know, like, wake up on my phone and play, you know, like, in a tournament. So it definitely is a nice, you know, like, the mobile aspect of the game is going to be coming on its way so really really happy to see that but getting back into the game actually we do just see that energy mix so pretty pretty weak turn here from 
Pado. They did go after the boss's orders, trying to knock out the Jolteon, but they missed the double turbo energy, which does mean that Giovanni is likely going to be able to lock in something like another Path of the Peak, maybe get some damage as well on the board. So definitely looking like a pretty, pretty close game here. We do see that Pado does also have the Rose Tower to counter a future Path of the Peak. So overall, Pado definitely has a really, really nice start, but so does Giovanni. No, exactly, exactly. So um, it, it's something that's really interesting. They also had access to getting around the path to the peak with their tower, did not get around it. So a little bit of a weaker start and getting that damage on the Oracorio. One thing that I do like when I put Oracorio down in this matchup, which is likely going to be incredibly important because of Jolteon's Max Thunder Rumble, if you put a Fusion Strike energy on that Oracorio, it can't get knocked out unless your opponent rips it up with a boss and Jolteon typically yeah. can only do 80 damage to it. So there is that one fan of waves it's really one of those things where this game looks like it's going downhill. Maybe this is why um, people might not necessarily know how to play against Jolteon VMAX anymore. I never thought of it like that, uh, but it is certainly an interesting aspect. Yeah, so we do see the Max Linda Rumble going to be taking that knockout, putting a lot of pressure on Pado to be able to find a stadium, but we do see the double chromatic, so we can only assume that they're going to use both of them to try to hit that stadium card to push for the knockout here. Yeah, 100%. Wait, Are we going to see... Oh, I do want to they say, like, has, has anyone ever seen, like, can I can I get Patricia's coin here? Because I feel like they <laughs> always, always get heads. Like, they might have only got one tail out of the entire, like, tire top, top eight, top four. Like, those Kramomatics are on fire here. Yeah, and we now see the fourth Genesec at the board, so they're going to be drawing so many cards. We're basically going to see almost their entire deck if they want to. We do see another Chromomatic, so maybe they think, you know, like, maybe they get a little bit risky here and go for another Heads. But from the looks of it, they're going to have a really good opportunity to be able to get this knockout. But we do see they did have to Chromatic away the Power Tablet as well, so they actually haven't used one yet this turn. So they're going to need two Power Tablets paired up with the Choice Belt that they already have to be able to get this knockout. But I think like one of the things that really makes this matchup so much better for Mew is that they now have the um, they now have the Belt, which just makes it so much easier to be able to push for that 300 damage. For yeah, it's knockout. really achievable, and we might just see it. Are we going to see another Kram Heads? Oh my it's goodness. another cram like literally where is that coin please 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 i will take it i will buy that coin for a bajillion dollars give it to anyone who's playing in salt lake city they are winning the event with music max if they have that coin right now uh it's that's yeah. on fire <laughs> So we do see the sparkle that comes out and they are going to be able to get the knockout here, but it's actually important to know that they don't have any more power tablets left in the deck and Giovanni does play two Cheryl. So yes, this Jolten VMAX is going to get knocked out, but I think this game is going to get very, very, very grindy towards the end of the game based off the fact that Pado doesn't have any more power tablets in their deck and Giovanni does have those two Cheryls to be able to heal over and over again. So although that Giovanni is losing that Jolteon VMAX, I definitely don't think this game is over. I think this is still a very, very close game. So let's see what happens. Yeah, I mean, that's a quick three prize card. It's kind of crazy like how uh, games can be almost over and you can just go knock out Jolteon, knock out Jolteon now. There is access to Cheryl. Um, that is something like, the Cheryl's not in the discard pile yet, is it? I don't believe so from what yeah, I Yeah, I don't saw. believe so Maybe either, I mean. Too. So we do see the level ball as well. So this is going to kind of be the situation where Giovanni kind of has to ride the wave here. Like a ton of um, pressure has been put onto him, but he just has to stay focused and, you know, kind of recognize that this game is still very, very winnable. We do see the Drizzle as well coming out. We have to assume it's going to be something like the tool to be able to use Max Under Rumble. We do see the Evolution Incense, so probably going to be going for that. Inteleon going to be looking for multiple cards here yep it's gonna be shady dealing so maybe something like a fan of ways maybe something like a um, tool card as well to be able to use max thunder rumble definitely got a lot of options here for them to be able to get themselves kind of back in the game and restabilize their board yeah it's it's really one of those things where um it's kind of cute oh there's the heartbreak we can only assume that another Zigzagoon is going to come down. I would, ass I would assume it's probably going to be something like a Zigzagoon. And this probably is going to be another game where something like the Echoing Horn is going to be very, very useful. Because we... Oh, okay. So they're going to fill their board to block the Echoing Horn. So really, really smart play there by Giovanni. Making it so that they can't use something like an Echoing Horn right now to be able to actually uh, get the knockout on Jolteon. That's actually a huge play because I think that Horn was definitely something that they were looking to be able to do here. And 
we are going to see a Max Thunder Rumble as well. So Giovanni really making some major movement in this game here. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Looking at uh, looking at the chat. How's it going, everyone? Thank you for everyone who's tuning in to this stream. I mean, it's getting very exciting. And so far, Jolteon's looking like it's doing really well. Um, oh, there's the Rotom phone. Not really grabbing anything. It looks like we wow. might just be saying... It, is this a concession? Okay. It yeah, is? I, wow. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah Gabe and I are sense. both like, we are English. We do not understand anything else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here? It's... Our, but yeah, no, it definitely looked like a concession there. So that is going to be Giovanni up game one. So uh, crazy good start. Jolteon, we might see a Jolteon finals, which could push Jolteon into a different light looking at Salt Lake City. I know a lot of people are looking at Brisbane. This event is double the size of that event. Um, I do want to let people know that like, this event might be more impactful and we might see a lot of Jolteon at uh, Bris at uh, Salt Lake City. So might be one of those things if you're playing a single prize card deck. You may or may not want to add in that mana fee. You may or may not want to play a water type deck. If your deck does not have a good matchup for Jolteon, you might not want to be playing your deck. It's a lot of things that could be interesting here. So we're going to see yeah, that something else. Start. Yeah, and something else is kind of important to note is that the Jolteon is a relatively uh, cheap deck and that a lot of people have the access for. I mean, like right now, I think the RCS V-Stars are going for like $40. That's a lot of guap, Zach. So, you know, you can still play a deck that is really strong, but isn't the most expensive. We kind of saw this in the past with um, Eternatus VMAX. It was super popular at one point, mainly because it was such a cheap deck, and it was also very, very strong. This is, you know, kind of another situation where you kind of have to take Jolteon VMAX seriously because it's shown that it can still actually, you know, perform at the highest level and that it's a deck that so many people just have on hand because it's you know it's been out for such a long time so yeah it's it's really 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 interesting um and i mean jolteon just came out with that specialty box i mean you can definitely have those hot looking yeah. jolteons as well uh, certainly <laughs> an interesting one you could cut your deck out uh by going to the walmart in salt lake city or uh wherever you're buying cards if you're going to walgreens or your local hobby shop or anything else like that uh really cool you over there <laughs> I mean, if there's anything left at your Walmarts, I mean, I have not seen a Jolteon box in the wild. So it's one of those things where, I don't know, Gabe, have you seen anything at your local Target or anything else like that? Um, I'm starting to see, like, more products start to come back, you know, because during COVID, we had, you know, like, that point where, like, everyone was just, I'm sorry, about everything. It seems like it's kind of calmed down in my area right now. Like, like, the scalpers are not as aggressive as they used to be. So, you know, I'm starting to see a little bit more product for sure. But that's definitely something that I kind of want to pick up because those Jolteon arts are so, so cool. Yeah, no, they're really cool. I like playing them oh, online. Oh, cool, jeez, it looks like there's nothing going on there. This is something that uh, Patricia's probably jumping for joy, uh, spinning around in the chair, in the off. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's one of those games that you just got to, like, go, yeah. I've definitely yelled at my Whoa, computer screen. And... Yeah, I don't know if I want it, like. Oh, my goodness. That's so aggressive. I don't know why you pee on. Oh, my goodness. Misclick. Oh, they misclicked. Okay, yeah, because I was uh... like, what? <laughs> uh... That's the one thing that. You know, IRL, you actually cannot, you can't actually misclick. So sometimes that does happen where uh, you accidentally hit that wrong card. I definitely have lost multiple games. I bet there are some people in our chat right now that are, you know, being like, I get, you know, like, I get the pain. I get the pain. So really, really sad, though, to see that happen there. But, but it's really not the end of the world because... Pato has such a dominating start, and Giovanni's board is so weak right now. It's really not the worst misclick in the world, but maybe if this game gets really, really close, we can look back at that play as something that if it didn't happen, maybe Pato would have won this game. So it's really interesting to note. Like I could, I can definitely like put out a bunch of different things. Like I've literally had my Wi-Fi flicker during the Players Cup, and I've I've literally had it to the point where I've lost a turn jump back in the game, won the game surprisingly. I had it at the I had it at the team challenge, the so just past team challenge, I made top 16. Uh, my entire team chilling at my house. So we're all just playing here, all like, we literally had the Wi-Fi go out in my building. We lost that entire round. Like there's so many different things about playing online that can really just change things in general. <laughs> Be gentle. <Ooh. laughs> So, uh, yeah, there's definitely things where, like, misclicks don't happen in real life. I've never accidentally dropped a card. Like, I've never dropped a research and pitched my hand away. Like, that's the equivalent of what we're watching here. It's kind of crazy. 
Yeah, 100%. Now we do see the Drizzle with that Shady Dealings coming out. Probably going to be getting something. Maybe like a Path of the Peak here. And the really important thing here to note is that they were able to get down the Jolteon V. But they have to get down another one because Boss's Orders is such a powerful card that I can only imagine that Pado is just going to be digging for that card to be able to knock out the Jolteon. So they have to kind of prepare for the fact that that Jolteon V is very likely to fall unless they are able to get something like a Path of the Peak. Exactly. It should also be noted too, uh, looking at the entire of the metagame um, or the entire rest of the games that we have going on, we had Sir Schnips go up game one against Juan. So it is one of those things where uh, we're going to have to see how that goes. Like it's really one of those things where uh, both we have two players that are one game away from being the Metafy regional champion um, or finalist at the very least. So very interesting um, how it's all playing out. Are we going to see a boss's orders this turn? Yeah, I mean, they're going to be drawing a lot of cards here. We do see the mist, though, so it looks like they're going to have to dig a little bit farther, but they got one more fusion strike system. They also, so they're probably going to be able to dig relatively hard. We see the three bosses' orders. We do not see any more chromatic, so they're not going to be able to flip for that boss's orders, which definitely, after watching some of these games, their flips have been on par. So, yeah, it, it, it's, it's decent odds awesome this. The other thing too is like we just drew into those two Pokemon. We could have seen a Quick Ball grab a Mew. That could have been one more card to draw. So I think I would have liked to see a little bit more deck thinning. Um, I know that's something that like I go over a lot in my coaching when I'm coaching on Metafy. Um, there's ways to improve your odds. I wasn't entirely sure of how many bosses were left there, but I don't think those Mews were necessary for the rest of the game. And those are cards that we could have grabbed, then pitched with away with the Ultra Ball, um, improving the chance. That's literally a dead card in the hand so really like interesting to see like i don't know if uh patricia if they necessarily have a reason for those muse in their hand maybe they want to have another one for psychic leap that could be advantageous i mean the game's still looking pretty good for them i don't think it's looking bad yeah i mean they definitely have a really good board state right now they have a ton of cards in hand we do also see the research and they do have to hit the jolteon vmax here that is a must and probably something like a path to the peak as well Definitely going to be a critical card to find here. We do see the energy search as well. Getting another energy. Probably going to see that be attached. Kind of interesting that choosing to attach it instead of maybe saving it for like a Cheryl's play, Zach. I'm not really sure like what your thoughts are on them kind of preemptively attaching it. Because we know that Pado does not play cards like Marnie to reshuffle. So what are your thoughts on choosing to attach on the bench instead of saving it for like a Cheryl play? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure. I think it's one of those things where like it wasn't necessary. It's the same way that I'm looking back and it's like that fusion strike energy that hit the field. I would have liked to see that on the Aura Choreo as I mentioned earlier. Um, in my matchup notes, I know that it's really good to do that. Um, are we going to see the other power tablet come down here and just knock out? There's that Tails. I mean, I guess it's proved that Patricia can get Tails on it. Uh, also don't know if I like to see a double turbo energy on the Genesect. I'd almost like to see that held as a potential retreat fodder for the Genesect V. Yeah, so we do see the Fusion Strike system drawing up to six cards here. We see the Alessa Sparkle as well. That could be absolutely critical to be able to get the knockout. They actually do just need the one Fusion Strike energy, and they're going to be able to do 300 damage. Yeah. And they have it, so yeah. Yeah, plus the Melon Choice Belt, plus they already have the tab. I think this game's probably over. We'd have to see, like, a yeah. Marnie and a Fan of Waves, and I think the Fan of Waves might have already happened this game, unless I'm going crazy. Yeah, and there's a concession. Choice Belt really proving as well, just to make this so much easier to be able to get those knockouts. Although we saw the Power Tablet just adds in another you know like element in the matchup to be able to actually be able to take that knockout and we do see pato going to be winning game two so we're back to another game three zach we saw top eight ended in a game three now we see this one also is going to end in a game three as well so this is going to be pretty exciting who do you think's favored here uh you know like, are you placing any bets right now uh, um, you want to know what i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it to patricia i think that mew is just like it's it's villainous activity that's my favorite new word villainous yeah. i think i saw it on tiktok <laughs> or something i was watching tiktok late at night but um that's how mew feels right it's up to mischief it's up to no good mew's always been kind of like the peaceful one i mean especially when you look at mewtwo or anything else like that mew looks kind of peaceful not anymore mew is absolutely an animal in this format just ripping through whatever your opponent has but we could see kind of a gross start here uh, from Patricia, we could see like that turn one Meloetta. I think Meloetta is actually what's broken the most about Mew, even though Mew copying every attack and accelerating energies and fusion strike system on Genesect, there's a whole bunch of things that are broken about it. I do think that uh, Meloetta is the thing that ruins Mew, like takes it to that whole other level. What are your thoughts, Gabe? Yeah, I definitely think that 
so I think like, the aspect of being able to knock out a V Pokemon on turn one is just so disgusting that it just really takes the deck to another level. And yeah, we see once again Giovanni just going to draw past. This is one of the issues with the Jolchan VMAX deck is when it gets set up, Zach, it is so, so strong and so tough to beat. But so much of the time, kind of like the Arceus and Teleon deck, those early turns are so, so stressful because the deck just you know like it doesn't play something like a fusion strike system or like a crobat you know like it doesn't have that luxury to be able to push turn one to be to find those cards and this is a perfect situation where intellion based decks just sometimes struggle super early and we're seeing that right now and against a deck like mu v max just being able to put off so much pressure on turn one just really makes us a tough matchup yeah, I think I would have played out the start a little bit different than Patricia is. I would have played it a little bit more aggressive, maybe using the yeah. Ultra Ball and maybe using the Cramomatic on the Quick Ball. Uh, you could see how uh, you could find yourself in a dead end. Um, wow. One of the com mi most common misconceptions I see about Mew Max is that this deck is uh, terrible. Like, it, it's so easy to play. There are so many different sequencing methods to playing Mew and that it could matter so much. Just like little things like that where I think the game would have literally been Patricia drawing a prize card this game, then going past with a single fusion strike energy in their hand. If, mm -hmm. if, if, if Giovanni gets a path to the peak here, I think Patricia might be out of the game. Yeah, I mean, this hand is absolutely terrible. And like we do see the fusion strike energy and kind of like as you said something that i say in my coaching is that <sighs> there are a, a lot of, yeah, yes, yeah, so there's a path to the peak. So we often see like a lot of players make tiny sequencing errors and stuff like that that adds up and in this situation they chose not to get another genesect and dig even farther and that's kind of put themselves in this situation where that path the peak is absolutely vicious so there's a lot of really small things that can turn into you know like a major mistake or a major change point in the game and right there we see that path just absolutely putting in work here but we don't see much else from giovanni yeah, I mean, at that point, like, what, what what's Patricia to do? I mean, I think they just have to go attach pass. Um, I mean, Giovanni has all the time in the world now. I, I think this is really where it's at, and I think we're going to see kind of a Jolteon make that comeback here. It doesn't look like a Jolteon deck. It looks like it's kind of like a Sobble deck. This could literally be any deck in the format right now, but it's, uh, it's a Jolteon deck for sure. I will put that out there. Yeah. <laughs> so we do see the quick ball so it looks like they are going to be able to get that jolt down finally on turn three you know there definitely are some spots where i have personally played Jolteon where I just have not been able to get really going here and that's kind of what we're seeing and there's the roast tower <laughs> uh, yeah like literally like oh <laughs> nice top deck there and we are seeing the rose tower was that the rose tower first that was rose tower right should be rose tower before genesect yeah yeah, so we should have also we, oh my goodness are we going to see the mu v max here two huge cards no we do. way just bringing it right back into the game there's the mu v max cross fusion strike techno blast even with the minus 20 jolteon's 190 okay. hp holding it back patricia going absolutely crazy here uh i'm sure they're like literally jumping for joy right now with that top deck yeah, I mean, this hand is absolutely insane for next turn. We see the Alessa Spark. We're going to be able to get up to 280 damage with the Meloetta's Melodus Echo next turn. So they really have a strong follow-up as well. Giovanni is able to get that Shady Dealings. And we do see the Double Quick Ball, which can only mean they're going to get something like Jolteon V and Jolteon V to get on the bench. Ideally, looking for something as well, like a Path to the Peak as well. Giovanni definitely on the back foot. Uh, after that incredible draw there by Pato, but I would say that the game's not over. I still think there's an out here. I, I can only assume that that next card is going to be something like a Drizzle or a draw supporter as they discarded a Marnie as well. Going to be interesting here for Zach to see exactly what they're able to pair up with these double Jolteons. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that I do want to like note is that Jolteon has zero follow back. If you don't have another Jolteon on the board, you can't hit. So for a deck that's just doing 100 damage here, 100 damage there, Path to the Peak can only hold off someone so long. We might be seeing yeah. a Marnie here. Oh, no Marnie. So currently, no out on Patricia's side. And Ooh, oh, we do see that. That's huge. It um, can be. I mean, it already couldn't maybe. attack next turn. We do see the double turbo energy. What's Patricia going to get? Yeah, so we see the top deck of a Genesect. Yeah, so the Phantom Wave is actually pretty big because... If they were able to get something like a switch, they could retreat into the Genesect, attach a double turbo from the hand, and then retreat, and then dump, you know, and then something like 
so like a cross fusion strike but we do see the lust of sparkle is as well so the question is do you think they go in with a meloetta here or oh, oh they're both prized so once again there they definitely could have checked that out but i still think it's okay for them just to burn it i like i don't really think that's too much of an issue yeah you definitely but it looks, well actually yeah, maybe yeah, not yeah. though because like what if you wanted to have a card for genesect in a future Pull it turn? Off the prizes maybe right like it, yeah it's, it's one of those things where like knowing your prize cards can be super important and here we are dead drawing again are we just going to take the knockout with the meloetta yeah this set has been such a roller coaster in here now it looks like giovanni has potentially the up foot i mean this has been just an incredible well, set i do want to know like that this meloetta can't get knocked out Par oh that's true so they're because gonna need of the to okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so that's huge but i definitely think that giovanni has kind of restabilized this board state has the Jolteon up, has an Atelian that he can scoop up net all that damage away, and Pato literally once again is just hoping on a prayer to be able to get something like a Rose Tower. That is very and we true. Do, and we do see the boss's orders. This is often a play that the Jolteon VMAX deck likes to do, and that play is going to be knocking out a double Genesect and then something like a Mew VMAX or something like a Meloetta plus an Oracorio. So going for that boss's orders play is really, really smart here, knowing that Pato would literally have to top like a Switch or a Rose Tower to get out of it. So very smart play there by Giovanni. Instead of just poking the Meloetta for it, something... I think it would only be doing 80 damage going for that more aggressive play probably going to try and get something probably going to try to get some damage on the oracorio as we saw there very smart because now this is able to open up the play where they can knock out the oracorio and then go boss's orders knock out the meloetta in one hit so really planning out their prize as well this is definitely uh, you know something that like a lot of the higher level players are able to no. do is plan their prize once again yeah Wait. i cannot believe this this I is, cannot believe this. Like, I, I, I don't know where these horseshoes are bought from. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. This is literally, like... I, I can only tell that Giovanni is probably saying uh, some sense. Like, what? Like, what? I have no idea. That's unbelievable. Like, it's okay, not like it's necessarily, like, the best draws after that. But, like, literally raw drawing stadium. I've never seen me do this so many times. Uh, luck is definitely on Patricia's side today. Yeah. I would definitely say that it makes this game a lot more close for sure. So it's definitely going to help. It makes it a little bit more of an entertaining game. The important thing though is to note that Pato's Rotom Phone is going to be getting a Chromomatic, I believe, on top. So once again, it's going to be based on a coin flip if another Path of the Peak hits the board, which Zach, I can only assume that Giovanni's going to be digging for that Path of the Peak. Got so many cards in hand, you gotta assume it's coming down. And yeah, just slams it right down. Probably a little bit frustrated as Pato keeps top decking out of it there. So definitely looking like a big turn. We see the Cheryl. So this is the play that I was talking about, being able to Cheryl away all that damage. Giovanni playing those two as well. Gonna be able to put themselves in a really advantageous board position. Gonna be able to knock out the Genesect. Gonna be able to hit the Mew Max for 100 as the or Quirrell is now gone as well that they're just going to be able to get a lot of pressure on the board and once again Pato's just based off a of chromatic flip exactly i mean we'll see if you want to go ahead and hit that like button hit that like button if you want patricia to get that chromatic heads no oh, we are going to see the tail. chromatic tails oh, oh there's a concession oh that's absolutely going to be was... game wow so con conceding there it looks like giovanni pergallo going to be able to take that game in game three insane set we saw that pato was just drawing super super well but we finally saw path of the peak was the demise of mew i have oftentimes said this that the only thing that's stopping mew is path the peak if path sticks for so long then it is going to be able to take a lot of games and there we are we see path of the peak being able to win it there that's crazy like i i wasn't necessarily i would what if you conceded there gabe I definitely would have played it out because the Mute VMAX wasn't actually getting knocked out. So I definitely would have gone after, you know, like I definitely would have said, okay, like I'm going to take the turn off or I'm going to smack it for 140 damage with the Meloetta. But that definitely seemed like a little bit of a premature scoop. But I mean, sometimes I guess if you know your deck, that. you know your deck, right? Like it's one of those yeah. things. Yeah. Um, it looks like we're almost set up for the finals. I'm just going to go ahead and let our judge know because I do want to talk about it um, for a second and see exactly what's going on here. Um,
Okay, so we're just getting everything set up for the finals. We can already get the names here because we got to go ahead and set this up. It's going to be the number one seed, Juan Andre, going up against Giovanni Paragallo. Uh, yeah. So uh, why don't we start talking about that matchup a little bit? Yeah, so we see it's going to be Arceus in Teleon with the dark box package. We see the two baby Moltres as well as the Cry of Destruction Evil Tall. Uh, and then we're, you know, as we just saw, going to be going up against Jolteon VMAX. From my experience, I think this matchup is definitely slightly favored for Jolteon based off the fact that both decks can't actually one-shot each other, but Jolteon also has a way to heal. Um, Juan Andre's deck has Sharon's Care. Giovanni's deck has Shero, but I think one of the big changing factors of this matchup is that Giovanni is able to get damage on the bench and it targets one's consistency line with that Max Thunder Rumble being able to take out that Inteleon line, which is really what this RCS V Star deck relies on. So definitely gonna be a really exciting match. I definitely think it's close though. I I think for sure the matchup's around 50-50 if the RC Centelion deck starts off first, but I think if Giovanni is able to get the first attack off, it definitely is favored for them. So I really think that from my experience, the coin flip is absolutely is absolutely huge. Yeah, it definitely can be. I do want to look at the list here. Um, so I'm just pulling it up here. Why don't we talk about the Jolteon VMAX list a little bit more because that is going to be one of our finalist decks that we have. We're just trying to figure out if we can get anyone to stream the finals. I know that Giovanni uh, has stated that they're over at their girlfriend's house and that they are, I think they're playing on a tablet. I could be incorrect there. It's one of those things where I'd love to be able to see the game from their perspective, but we are going to see if Juan can do that. So let's look at, at this list here. What are your thoughts immediately, Gabe? Um, looking at the Juan Andre list, yeah, like I definitely think it's one of the most clever lists that I've seen to come out of this format. One of the big things that RCS V-Star and Tailand could struggle with is the Mew matchup, as we saw in the top eight. So having that Evil Tall and the Galarian Moltres as well is a really, really nice package you would counter that. And also, as we've been seeing, is that decks are starting to cut their psychic energies and only go to a special uh, base list. So having the Evil Tall to be able to use the Cry of Destruction to wipe out all of those special energies is a really, really cool uh, play for sure. We also see the Claire as well, so they're going to be able to do that multiple times per game. Also helps out. So we're actually, we're, I'll cut you off, Gabe. We're oh, actually looking at the Jolteon yeah. VMAX list. Oh, the Jolteon, okay. So for the Jolteon <laughs> no worries. No, 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 you're good. You're good. Um, so for the Jolteon VMAX list, it's just pretty, I mean, it's pretty standard. I mean, there really isn't anything that's too, too surprising. Kind of like as I said a little bit earlier, we do not see the Ultra Ball and I think that's totally fine. I think that that card really doesn't need to be played in this deck. Overall, though, you know, we see the 4-3 Jolteon VMAX. We see the Italian line as well as the Zigzagoon. We do see the Fan of Waves that, as we saw in that top four, was very, very, very important. So definitely a critical card. I personally like two Fan of Waves right now, but I can understand why they are playing the one. And then overall, you know, like as we saw, the four Path of the Peak. Path of the Peak is absolutely a critical card in so many matchups. And as we saw, it was an absolute game changer. Yep, so I mean, I think, I don't know, I think Jolteon VMAX is cool. There's are some personal updates um, that I'd like to see exactly what's going on. Um, I'm trying to figure out exactly, it looks like um, um, we may or may not have a final stream. It looks like Juan and Giovanni um, might be, uh, I, I don't want to be like figuring something out, but it, I, I don't know entirely what's going to be going on. Um, we're going to have to be pairing the match soon. I'm just going to, we're going to take a brief break before we jump back into it and we'll uh, catch you guys there in a bit. So stay tuned.
All right. So we are back with the grand finals. It's going to be Giovanni against Juan. It's going to be Arceus versus Jolteon. I know I wasn't necessarily expecting Jolteon here. What's everyone's thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on it, Gabe? Yeah, I definitely was not expecting Jolteon to make it here. I think that, you know, like the general consensus was that Mew is just going to win every single major tournament. No matter what you do, it's going to be Mew's world. And we're all, you know, just kind of living in it. But here we do see the Jolteon VMAX deck kind of shocking everyone to go this far. And then we see the Arceus and Teleon list with a, a lot of spicy cards like the Galarian Moltres and the Evil Tall. So it's kind of like two decks we weren't really expecting to go, you know, like this, this far, right? So it's really exciting to see these two completely different decks go up against each other. And it is going to be a great match. So we see the Quickball coming out, discarding that Marnie and just a pass. So they discard a Supporter, which definitely means that they have something for next turn. And action is back on one. Yeah, it's definitely uh, kind of a huge push there. Now, I do want to let everyone know if you are tuning in for the first time here that um, this event is sponsored by Metify.gg. You can check them out at their website, Metify.gg. Um, they donated $2,000 of prize support into this event. So it's absolutely amazing for them to be giving back to our Pokemon community. I do want to give uh, a huge shout out there. Both Gabe and myself, uh, who are casting this event, are Metify coaches. So if you are trying to get coaching from ourselves or anyone else on the Metify website, there's many other great coaches, including Azul GG, the Players Cup 3 champion. You also got uh, Tord Reclip, highly regarded as the best player in the game. These are the type of quality coaches you are going to be seeing on Metify. And a lot of people just don't necessarily know if they can up their game. I think that most players, including myself, I wouldn't even mind getting coaching if I could find ways to improve my gameplay. So by all means, check that out. Um, kind of jumping back into the game, uh, I'll ask you, Gabe, what are your thoughts on the Arceus V-Star versus Jolteon matchup? Like, I'm, I'm still trying to figure this one out here. Like, there's no mana fee in Juan's list, is there? Um, there is not. Honestly, from my experience from this matchup, it's really whoever gets the first attack off. So, so much of the time, it's just whoever wins the coin flip, right? Uh, from the looks of it, Giovanni did win the coin flip, so they chose to go first. They also got to a double Jolteon V and a keep calling. Um... Actually, no, um, Juan actually won the coin flip, but I didn't get the energy. Okay, so my bad. Um, so we do see the Drizzle coming out, but I think it's really, really close because both decks are able to heal, right? So um, the Arceus Italian deck plays Sharon's Care, and then Giovanni's list plays two Cheryl. So it's going to be a grinder match for sure. But one of the things that is important to note is that... Jolteon hits the bench in that Inteleon is an absolutely critical card to be able to continue this Sharon's loop. Juan wants to be able to loop Sharon's as many times as possible, as well as some of those, you know, like, other one of draw supporters, like, maybe, like, the Clara comes up. Like, there's going to be a lot of situations where they need to search for a specific one of card that if the Inteleon, uh, you know, like, engine is not there, then it's really, really bad for them. So I definitely think the matchup is slightly favored for Giovanni, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, it can be tough. I mean, at the same time, though, like, it's going to be hard to take down an Arceus, right? With cards like Charon's Care, I think it can be, like, that kind of, like, weird play. And maybe even, like, with the Evil Tall that we see on Juan's side, are we going to see anything else? Are we going to see, like, that Evil Tall take down some Speed Lightning energies? There's a lot of really cool things that could happen. Um... I mean, we'll see if they if we get a chance to see if the cool things happen or if it's going to be an otherwise normalized matchup. I always like to think of like the outrageous things that can happen in the game, because especially earlier on in the game, we didn't we would have necessarily thought that the matchup between Patricia and uh, Giovanni would have played out the way that it did. At a lot of points, it looked like Patricia was going to be able to make it to the grand finals here. And here we are, uh, Giovanni making it past all that with some uh, very interesting plays, some very interesting top decks. Yep, so we see the Zigzagoon coming down, going to be hitting that Drizzle. We can only imagine they're going to be pushing for that Max Thunder Rumble, going after that Drizzle to take out the Inteleon option. Just going to need an Energy plus a plus a Drizzle to be able to pull this off. We do see the Level Ball coming out. So the question is, is do they have one of those two pieces? All they need is either the Lightning Energy or the Tool Card to be able to pull this off. We're going to get a little bit of knowledge of exactly what they have here based off what they draw with the Shady Dealings. What's going to happen off that Shady Dealings? It really makes me wonder. Ooh, an Evolution Incense. Is that going to be something for next turn? Yeah, so that might be a sign that they missed. Yeah, so that's a perfect sign that they missed there. 
um, just a little bit short. And yeah, we do see the sad face from Giovanni bailing out Juan. So now Juan has kind of regained the tempo here. Going to be able to get that first attack off with that Trinity Nova. Going to be able to power up that Arceus V on the bench ideally and it looks like they're going to be able to guarantee it the question is do they go quick ball and discard something like a Sh um sharon's care doesn't look like they're going to do that going to use something like a uh quick shooting okay so it looks like they're going to do that yeah it's uh pretty interesting we're... draw there yeah it's very interesting so we see the Marnie coming out, going to be able to get that double turbo energy, which is absolutely huge. We see the Dark as well. We're going to see a quick shooting probably onto that Jolteon V just to soften it up, make it a little bit easier to boss's orders knock up because Trinity Nova with that double turbo energy only does 180 damage. So that's going to be absolutely critical to get that 20 there just to give them the option to boss's orders at some point. Also see the Scubanet putting up the Inteleon. We're going to see an RCS benched as well. And we got the energy to go onto it. So just a perfect turn here coming out from Juan. Really able, you know, like really being able to take the tempo of this game. And they choose to Trinity Nova and save the Arceus. Very, very smart play here because Giovanni's goal is going to be able to take big four prize card turns, knocking out something like a V-Star and a V. So Juan Andre's goal here is to... Is going to be to only bench the rcsv the turn before the v star actually is going to get knocked out there are so many players that would actually not choose to do that they would see the rcsv and they would just slam it down thinking that oh getting these dark energies on it is going to be critical but in reality you want to save it you want to hold your resources in this matchup yeah it's uh we'll see i i mean i think that looked like a really good turn overall and i mean Seems like uh, they're, they're doing pretty well for themselves. I mean, Arceus, like we said, probably the most second most successful archetype. But we are seeing that uh, fan of waves just coming out of nowhere. Um, and that could really, like, kind of hit those double turbo energy. Now, you always think, does your opponent have it? I think Juan had a pretty dead hand if they didn't play Marnie. Yeah. We'll see if they can get anything. It's one of those things where you live by the Marnie, you die by the Marnie. And there's a lot of resources. Although, if you go for the research, research you might just have to pitch away those two Charons. That might be a little, little, little difficult. Yeah, like I definitely think that pitching away both Charons is so, so bad towards the end of the game. Kind of an interesting thing to note here is that Juan chose not to attach a fourth dark energy or a water energy onto the active which kind of made them very very vulnerable to something like a fan of waves so the choice not to do that and in, in, like and kind of prepare for the future turns is kind of coming back to bite them there me personally i definitely would have attached the extra energy because it's just going to go back um into the hand with the sharon's care anyways but yeah we just see the pass there which is really unfortunate to see but Juan Andre smartly being like, I cannot lose these Sharon's cares or else I can never win the matchup. This matchup's entire basis is can you Sharon's care both times, get the maximum use out of it, and just kind of grind the Jolteon deck down with those healing cards. Yep, so I think like we're just waiting to get it to a point where it needs to be Sharon's cared. I think we're gonna see the Sharon's care this turn. Um, and probably sacrificing that Arceus. Or, sorry, not that Arky, is that uh, Inteleon? I mean, when he, when he give me a bunch of names in general, I just literally cannot. At some point, there's a certain point where I'm just like, I just start saying random things, and it's just like, that's how it's going to be going. So, setting up the Inteleon, a bit as the Meat Shields, but we're also just going to see Jolteon taking a third prize card for Giovanni, which is just kind of huge. I think, um, kind of going back yeah. and forth, like... Sometimes you're just too far behind in a game, and it looks like Giovanni's Jolteon deck tearing it down. Yep, we do see the research. Now the question is, do they discard the Sharons? And I think they have to. Like, I think it's definitely a winning play here, because they have to double turbo, and they miss it. So I definitely think that this game is looking like it's going to be in Giovanni's hands, and we do see one Andre, it looks like. They are sending that concession, just not able to really get going there. Uh, that fan of waves really just completely changed the game as you saw, just completely turning that game over and putting it in Giovanni's favor. So we're heading to game two. Juan Andre once again going to go first, hoping to get uh, a strong setup once more and hopefully dodge that fan of waste for his sake. So 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of things. The GLBB, uh, <laughs> you can see that they're definitely uh, familiar with each other, um, and it's one of those yeah. things where uh, that that's really cool. It's nice to see peeps. Uh, me and the pals along the way. I've definitely uh, played against a lot of my friends in the finals of some major events, and it's cool to see like. You might not necessarily win the event, but at the end of the day, it's a community effort and seeing what's going on. So we're all part of the Pokemon community. I think some of us may or may not forget that at times, but it is nice to see some uh, friendly remarks between uh, two players. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're rivals, whatever's going on, but either way, they're keeping it chill, keeping it friendly, and that's uh, what it's all about. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it... so we do see... Oh, you can go. <laughs> oh, I, I was just going to say, uh, sometimes... <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I just babble on here. I'll let Gabe go ahead. Um, it, it was just kind of one of those things where I was just like, really happy to see, and I don't really have any thoughts after that. Gabe, it's your, all yours. The feel, it's all yours. Our <laughs> so we do see the RCSV speed come down with the water energy, but they weren't able to get something else like a Sobble um, to pair up with on the bench. And it looks like we do see the double Sobble coming down as well with the Jolteon um in the active so it looks like a relatively decent start for both sides they got the energy as well which is going to be absolutely critical being able to poke something like the rcsv might actually come into handy and we do see the marty which honestly if i was one i'm pretty happy about this my hand was not great i was going to be forced to use something like a shady dealings to be able to get like a draw supporter but now you don't got to do that so overall not that bad but the big thing is that that path of the peak has hit the field forcing juan andre to just raw draw into something like the double turbo they're not going to be able to use something like starbirth which is absolutely huge in this matchup and they're just going to kind of be preying off those five cards to be able to get them that double turbo i can only assume we're going to see the evolution incense here um or the research wow okay so going all in here i guess we're uh, going to be able to get another one too that might be able to grab the evolution incense right there with the second drizzle oh this is really risky not getting the so, uh... so pay <laughs> off. wow they got everything but uh, do they have a way to get the knockout here? Um, I don't think they have. They just hit for 180. Yeah. Um, so just 10 damage like short. I know a lot of peeps might not necessarily like think like that. 10 damage is a lot of damage, especially in this world where that could have been a knockout and it just doesn't happen to be that way this time around. So um, we could see a Cheryl and just start using a Max Thunder Rumble. Those Arceus are kind of locked out of the game from Starburst. Yep, so... so yeah, and here again, once again, that fan of waves that really changed the game last time comes out paired up with a Marnie. So that's double turbo energy going on the bottom of the deck. Also with the Marnie, really, really, really strong card fan of waves being to put it onto the bottom and not actually shuffle, uh, which really makes the card so, so strong. We see the quick ball coming out as well. It was a speed energy. We can only assume that they have an out here to be able to use that max thunder rumble. We still see the 20 ping as well. And there's a drizzle, Zach. So we're going to see a Jolteon V Max be slammed down here. Yeah, and knock out one of those Sobbles on the bench. And I mean, there's the drizzle available in Juan's hand. So it is one of those things where all hope is not lost. Their hand is not dead. Uh, when you're playing this game, a lot of times you want to save that bench space for a Crobat or a Luminion. Um, in general, uh, when you're playing a deck that plays the Inteleon lineup, you want to be able to have those Sobbles on the bench. So at least one Sobble is going to make it through this uh, whole uh, transaction. Although this is a little bit of a, a long search. I don't know if they're searching through their prizes a second time or... Uh, because obviously you want to be treating the finals very seriously. I mean, you're in the finals of an event with over 350 players. You have 200 people watching you. Uh, what's going to be going on here? <laughs> um yeah so we do yeah, so we see the research in the badge oh, oh and they're passing interesting um that that's so actually really 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 interesting that's something that i was not expecting at all to happen i was expecting for that uh sobble to get just white what's what's gonna go on here uh th these games have been kind of interesting i, I do have to say like giovanni might have used up all their luck at this point because it doesn't necessarily look like the finals like I know that they're up a game, but like they're just not necessarily drawing too well. I think that's the thing that yeah. holds me back from Jolteon. It's like these really awkward draws. Like you can tell, you can usually squeeze out a late game, and we've seen Giovanni, master escape artist, uh, squeeze out many of these games all night. But is it worth it to play Jolteon? We'll have to see. Yeah, I think we kind of saw in top four where like Giovanni was falling so far behind and just kind of had to bank on that path of the peak to be able to save them simply because of the fact that they just were drawing so so poorly and you know, like this is a matchup where path of the peak is not going to save you based off the fact that we have drizzle with that shady dealings to be able to kind of counteract that path from wands and so maybe giovanni's luck is kind of starting to 
kind of starting to run out, but it's important to note that they do have a research here, so they're going to be able to at least get something, you'd have to assume. Like, like a Max Thunder Rumble's coming. It's just whether or not they can follow that up with much more. Exactly. It's it, we, like Maybe we're not even looking, like we're only looking at through uh, Juan's perspective. Giovanni might be staring down and all the Jolteons are just not there. Like the Jolteon VMAX could just not exist in the deck. Pokemon does have prize cards. Something really interesting <laughs> to look into. I also want to give everyone, if you do like these two players, I see a lot of friends of these players, um, hit the like button. It really helps out support these players and maybe broadcast it to more people who can be fans of these players. A lot of people don't necessarily talk about the opportunities about being on stream. You can kind of build up a little bit of a player rep and maybe you will even find yourself getting approached by Metafy to become a coach on the platform. No way. Did they miss again? Okay, I'll get back to it. Yeah, hit that like button. Either when you're watching the Grand Finals match, when you're watching here, root on these players, hit that like button. Also, go check out Metafy.gg. Wow. Yeah, 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 that's a huge miss. I'll, uh, Gabe, you can talk about that miss all you want. <laughs> yeah, so they did miss here, which does mean that Juan Andre is going to be able to take another prize card here. The question is, do they get the boss's orders to be able to knock out the Jolteon? That's personally what I would do here. Oh, so they can get the Evolution Incense and the boss's orders to knock out the fresh Jolteon, which is absolutely huge. We see the Ultra Ball, totally fine because they want to thin out some of these like extra cards they don't actually need. Get that extra fluff out of the deck. And this is a huge turn here from Juan. They're going to be able to get that knockout on the healthy Jolteon, leaving a damaged, weakened um, Jolteon. Oh, okay. So no, they're just going to quick well. shooting and take four prize cards yeah. this turn. That is, yeah. uh, I think we're going to be going to game three real quick if I ever saw one. Uh, what, a, yeah, what a turn. I, you, I, I, we've, we've seen so much Mew that almost quick shooting doesn't seem like it's doing anything here. Yeah. Right, there's, just a gonna, <laughs> yeah. there's a quick concession. They all know what's going on. They made it all the way to the finals. Um, we'll, we'll see exactly how that goes. Now, who's going to be going first? That's a big question. I think uh, both players for their decks want to be going first in this matchup. Yeah, so once again, we have a Game 3 Top 8, Top 4, and Finals going to be showcasing a Game 3. Absolutely fantastic play from all these players, and it's down to one final game. Juan Andre versus Giovanni Pergallo here. Going to be a great finish as we see Juan personally has a fantastic start here. Kind of got everything that they need, so it would be cool to see uh, Giovanni also get a good setup too. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I think like... Uh... It's something that we didn't see a lot in formats. We saw a lot of those, like, 2-0 upset wins. And it's nice to see, like, kind of a full game. I mean, although it is a full game in se two games in 17 minutes, who's going to win there? And uh, I don't know. It's looking good for Giovanni. You got the Jolteon down, Sobble down, yeah. and uh, Path is going to shut off Starbirth for game. Like, that's one complete flaw in Juan's deck. Uh, Juan has a great deck list. Maybe a Pumpkaboo would be cool. Maybe Collapse Stadium yep. to at least have an out. There's currently no way to get around that. So I know you play path yourself, but you want to go Starbirth for the path most of the times or play yeah. path with the Drizzle afterwards. And we're not going to see anything there. So looking like it's uh, it's kind of a big Hertz turn if I've ever seen one. Yeah. So we saw the smiley face from Giovanni once they used the Marnie, maybe signaling that once again, Giovanni did not have a great hand being bailed out by Juan's marnie and oh my goodness we see what a strong turn here the question is do they have a level ball oh my goodness zach so this is a critical critical turn here looks like they're going to be able to put so much pressure on and one kind of recognizes that they literally marty giovanni into the perfect five cards i don't i honestly don't know if there was a better five cards than that zach but yeah it looks like <laughs> giovanni's off and running yeah sometimes when when jolteon gets a good hand like this it's really like i think jolteon pushes uh, the pedal forward, and we are going to see that quick damage off for the 100 damage. We are going to see that knockout on the Sobble, and uh, it just kind of leaves Juan like, what is going on? How How is this yeah. going to be working out? <laughs> like, it's a toughie. It's a toughie, right? Like, there's Juan, or with Giovanni with that quick prize card. Like, I don't know. No Starbirth, yeah. no nothing. Uh, it, it's going to take a while to kind of get to this point, and that Arceus is already like discounted, right? It's like when you go to the store and there's some damaged goods on the shelf and you're trying to get 50% yeah. off here. Maybe that's just me. I'm, I feel like I'm leaking all my secrets here, but uh, that Arceus got some damage on it. Now, what's going to be going on? Are we going to see? There's no double turbo though. Oh, no Charon's Care. Looks like uh, we're looking for that double turbo. Boom, double there turbo. There it is. Bull and the Shady Dealings as well. So that's going to be really, really nice to pair up for the next turn. So it looks like that one does have a game plan for these next two turns which is definitely good 
for him. They got the Shady Dealings next turn. That's got a boss's orders as well. So got some options next turn, Zach, for sure. And also that's active. V is going to be protected by that big charm, which means that something like a quick shooting won't actually won't actually be able to knock it out because the big charm puts it up to 250. So that is very, very important. Yeah, no, it's I think it's kind of great. It's one of those things that like how is uh how's Giovanni gonna react to this? I think that's the biggest question. Like it doesn't really matter what Juan's doing right now because Juan's just like accelerating energies and it's not putting pressure down on the board. Is Arceus enough to get through an entire field of uh, a Jolteon? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll be the first to admit I have not necessarily playtested the Jolteon matchup versus yeah, Arceus yeah. uh, kind of thing going on here, right? Like, I think a lot of us are still like surprised that, whoa, Jolteon's a real deck um, really pushing it forward this week. So um, maybe they're both playing in unknown territories. We'll have to see what's going on here. Like, is there anything to draw? It's, it's looking rough. Like, there goes that shady dealing in Teleon that was uh, sounding so, so good. We just do the Claire in the hand, which I don't think is going to be too, too useful. I mean, like, honestly, one of like, the most important things about um, the fact that that's there is that could easily be something else. Maybe, like, another Ultra Ball or, like, another Research, like, a, you know. So, it's... Um, Juan Andre's list is definitely a little bit strange, and they play a, a lot of, I could say, unconventional cards here. So the fact that that is not maybe a consistency card, like a research, definitely is hindering him right now. And Juan is pretty much just on a top deck or I lose phase, and there's the Cheryl. So just wiping out all of that work um, that one is trying to put onto the field and now it's just really looking like giovanni's game to lose here we see the jolteon come up paired up with that quick shooting gonna be able to knock out that drizzle really really smart here if they choose to knock out the drizzle here but looks like they're gonna knock out there they definitely could have knocked out the drizzle just trying to just like trying to take away like that consistency engine but i think knocking out the rcs is definitely understandable as well it I, I think this might be it i think we might just be seeing a concession here at this point uh one last trading nova for the show um, it looks like uh, we have Giovanni <laughs> as our champion. So yes, why don't um why don't we look over what Giovanni's deck list looks like? I know we were already looking at it before, uh, but we did have it win the entire event. Let's talk about it a little bit, and we'll uh, sign everyone off in our casters booth. Um, if you are watching the grand finals on YouTube, I appreciate every single person tuning into this. Check out Metify.gg. Pick up some coaching today. Thank you so much to Metify for uh, sponsoring this event. But let's uh let's go ahead and check out that deck list for everyone watching the live stream. So here we go. There's the deck list. We have it. Uh, we have this is the champion deck list from Giovanni. Yeah, what so we got the champions deck list from Giovanni. Once again, relatively standard deck list here from Giovanni. Just kind of choosing for the max consistency, which I think is really, really good. Um, and with the four Marnie, three research, two share, two boss stores, four quick ball, four level ball, etc. etc. There's a really, really streamlined list and kind of showing that consistency is king right now in the Pokemon trading card game. As we saw there, uh, Juan Andre definitely did not get off to a very, very good start that game. Kind of like as I noted, that their deck definitely plays a lot of very strange and unconventional one ofs that we kind of saw get back to Juan there. So, you know, definitely sure that Jolteon VMAX is still a fantastic deck, just being able to kind of do the same thing over and over again. You know, like we oftentimes see try and do so much at once where, you know, Jolteon just does one thing over and over and over again. Only only has that one singular max um, max under rumble, which is so, so powerful. Uh, and yeah, I mean, everyone thought this deck was terrible. People were like, oh, Manaphy's just going to ruin the deck. Oh, you know, like... I'm Sharon's care is so bad for it, but we still were able to see it take the win there. So I do have a question for you, Zach. Do you think that now with the fact that Jolchan has kind of risen back up to that tier two to tier one status, do you think that we will see things like Manaphy be included? I think that? players just have to at this point, right? Like you just can't necessarily be like, I'm going to disregard a 360 player event. Right? Like, we had the largest Brilliant Stars event that was best of three. This is likely going to be a similar side to what's going to be on at Salt Lake City Regionals. So I think players might just have to pick up Rapid Strike again. Uh, Rapid Strike, Urshvu VMAX, that is. I think players might look into Manaphy. The metagame probably just got flipped on its head in front of our eyes. And it's going to be really exciting to see how other events follow this event. Um, I'm really excited to see what's going to be going on at Salt Lake City Regionals next week um, as a follow-up. But obviously, Jolteon VMAX is going to be making some 
power ranking videos. Players are probably going to start covering it on their YouTube channels. I know I'm probably going to be like, I have it on my whiteboard list now. Got to cover Jolteon on VMAX. It literally just won. And uh, we just saw how it won and how it can uh, absolutely dismantle an Arceus V-Star deck. So overall, I think Jolteon VMAX, completely underrated. I think it's one of those things where Giovanni saw that, and that's what makes them one of the best players in the game. You you saw it here first, Jolteon VMAX winning. Um, we're going to take a brief break, uh, like literally 10 second break. I'll catch you back in the caster's booth, Gabe. Turn on our cameras. Uh, I'll definitely pull, uh, put my... Uh, shirt back on, all that kind of good stuff. We'll be uh, right over there in a second. Casting booth. All right, we are back live here just to kind of sign everything off and uh, talk about the event a little bit. So, what, uh, what do you want to kind of talk about, Gabe, here? Like, I know we've already talked about the list. We've already seen the players. Uh, why don't we talk about the event as a whole for a little bit? I know that um, we've had two days, 14 rounds, top eights. Um, what are your thoughts on the metagame as a whole right now? I know that you're attending Salt Lake City as one of the uh, kind of up-and-coming players out of the pandemic. What are your thoughts after viewing this event immediately? Yeah, like, I think that's actually a great question. Well, going into this event, it was like how dominant is Mew going to be? Because we saw at the Brisbane Regionals, Mew just absolutely tore apart the field. I think there was four on top cut. I think everyone kind of came to the consensus that Mew is just going to win every single tournament, it seems. So I was really surprised to see a deck like Jolteon VMAX actually take this win. And now I have to figure out exactly, like maybe I'm gonna play Jolteon, or now I actually have to like tech for the deck, or maybe you know, like I have to choose my deck choice based around the fact that Jolteon is back. Jolteon is a real threat in the format. Maybe that's going to mean, you know, like people start to play um, stuff like Manaphy. Maybe that means something like Rapid Shark Urshu is going to come back. So the fact that uh, the fact that Jolteon just was able to show up kind of out of nowhere, right? So it is really, really cool. But we had over 300 players. Shout out to Giovanni. Shout out to Juan. Shout out to everyone that did so, so well. This was an insane event. They fought through, I believe, 15 rounds. Four, 14 rounds and then a top eight cut. like by the yeah. end of the tournament that's that's literally 17 rounds and yeah. those rounds are about an hour long so hard earned on some of that metafy go -wop. thank you so much for metafy for literally sponsoring this event uh, making it free for our pokemon community i believe this is the first metafy sponsored pokemon tcg event so as an organizer i regularly run my late night series on mondays you can check those out as well on the play limitless website i do really appreciate metafy giving me the opportunity to give back to our pokemon community wherever possible and running this event i think uh I don't want to necessarily pat myself on the back yet because uh, there's always going to be those Twitter threads after an event, no matter what happens. Uh, not everyone's going to enjoy every event, but it looks like everyone had a great time this weekend. Uh, improved a lot over our last regionals experience that I ran, uh, including some uh, common griefs of, uh, is there top 16 prizing? There wasn't a top 16 cup, but there was top 16 prizing. Um, for me, I think the biggest thing is like, we see players like Tord Reckliv from this event, just kind of jumping right back to the metagame. Tord Reckliv did play Malamar this weekend. And I mean, Malamar is probably going to go stonks. I think anything toward touch is going to turn to absolute gold i gotta probably relook at Mal or at uh, malamar and see exactly what's going on malamar historically has a terrible matchup against jolteon so all of those malamar stonks like we might see a lot of players just be like my favorite player in the whole world is toward they just played malamar i want to see exactly what towards going jolteon might be even in a better position than we think especially with other decks like dark toolbox and we even see durant these are decks that may or may not play manaphy so i think the big thing to note for a lot of players is the metagame is probably going to change. We might see some more fighting type decks go into the metagame. Even in a field of Mew, Jolteon just won. Arceus is still weak to fighting. Gengar, my personal favorite, is weak to fighting. So one of those things. We also got Manaphy. Manaphy blocking that bench damage. And especially if Rapid Strike is going to kind of uh, be there as a response to um, the Jolteon. Uh, that's another deck that would benefit against Manaphy. So I think Manaphy stonks going up. I think Mew's still very good. I think Arceus is still very good. Our metagame is way less developed than I have originally thought. I did not think that it was going to play out like yeah. this. I would have never bet in a thousand years. Uh, I'm not going to Salt Lake City. My best wishes to anyone who's going, who's going to be the... I thought Brisbane was going to be the guinea pig kind of uh, regionals where we got the metagame out of the way. We understood that Mew VMAX is broken. The metagame just got dropped, flipped on its head. 
Um, all I could say is if you're looking to grow your game, uh, pick up some Edify coaching and we can all discover it together and really uh, come up with some solid strategies. I know that I'm available. As you can see, uh, I'm a coach on Metify. Gabe's available. There's, I believe, another like 20 or so coaches that are all available from all different price ranges, all different parts of the world, all with different strategies that you can learn from today. Um, I don't know. Uh, any other words that you want to go over with, Gabe? I honestly think that the fact that um, Jolchan 1 was actually pretty good for the meta now because it almost seemed like um, over the past couple weeks there was just like one or two decks that were just winning every single event and now that the fact that something like Jolchan VMAX has now shown that it's actually a tier 1 tier 1.5 deck it's just going to add a lot more um, depth into the meta and it's going to give something else you know like people now have to prepare for it which is honestly a um, super good thing because you know, like the more decks that are viable definitely helps um, the Pokemon trading card game makes it a lot more interesting uh, and makes the game a lot more fun to play because you know you got more stuff to think about and it also really helps when it comes to um, I think it's going to really bring out like players skills when it comes to deck building basically like since the fact of meta is now I'm starting to widen that now leaves more room for people you know to come in with that crazy you know insane secret deck um, for salt lake city right so i'm super super excited to see how the metagame is going to develop i know we got the late night series um invitational tomorrow right so yeah, that's we got be... that going on it's been a it's that's been a jam-packed cool. week for your boy zach and yeah. uh it's probably gonna be a few more jam-packed weeks uh, but it's all one of those things where it, it's gonna be exciting um so it all in all everything i do again want to shout out metify.gg check them out if you are trying to pick up some coaching in any game i mean maybe you're watching this stream and you're stumbled apart and you're like what the heck is this pokemon stuff they have some of the greatest coaches in there. Uh, like even if you're looking for Smash or if you're looking for Fortnite or kind of anything, you pick them up. If you are more looking for Pokemon TCG, I'm sure all of uh, the coaches are, like myself, getting everyone geared up for the next in real life regionals at Salt Lake City. Any in real life events, any kind of local events, any kind of online events, uh, we're all there to help out our Pokemon community grow. So by all means, check that out. I do want to give a kind of extend my hand. Thank you so much, Gabe, for helping me cast this event. Uh, it's been oh, absolutely uh, great. Your knowledge on the game, showing where your boy be slipping. So thank you so much for all of that. And uh, that being said, we'll catch up with all y'all soon. If you are looking to play in online events, you can check out my events every single Monday at play.limitless. Uh, check out the Zach Lesage events. Late nights are every single Monday. They're going to be now for season four, starting in a week from now. They're going to be starting at 6 p.m. Eastern. So check that out. Um, by all means, uh, check out the description of this video for any information regarding Metify or anything else regarding this event. Uh, stay tuned, the grand finals. If you missed that part, it's gonna be posted up and this whole live stream is available to watch. Again, thank you so much to Metify for making this happen. We'll catch up with all y'all later. Peace out and have yeah. a great one.